a vast and a hoy and good day once again to <laughs> ye meaties. Oh, I be Josh the Pirate, and it brings me an overflowing shopping trolley full of pleasure to welcome you once again to the humble wood. Above me, I have my hearty crew, the upcoming Rachel Fuka, the upstanding Mitch Earnshaw, the upright Dan Suelto, and the uppity AJ Winters. <laughs> And behind the scenes today, we have the upended Serum 76. We must also shout out our upbeat artist, Brie Pie, whose artwork you can see on the screen right now. Oh, no, you can't, because we've got a giveaway this evening, but we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> and the deck of many, who are the minds behind this particular setting. <clears throat> um, it is also important to note that Wootenforge are back on board as our sponsors for another season. They design and manufacture high quality wooden tabletop gaming products using beautiful Australian and exotic hardwoods like this. Um, <clears throat> and they are local to WA and they do custom orders. And those custom orders are getting even sexier and I will explain why in a minute. So check out their incredible work at their website, wootenforge.com. Use the promo code HUMBLE1 in the when you get to the checkout for a sneaky discount, you cheeky monkeys. And they've got a special on for Halloween free engravings for the next seven days. So they will carve whatever you want into the wood that they have already carved for your pleasure, um, <clears throat> which is pretty sick. So head on over to woodenforge.com for some awesome deals. And as the, uh, as the overlay is telling you right now, we've got a giveaway for this evening. It is a Jara Dice Keeper, very much, but not exactly like this one, because this one's mine and you can't have it. Um, so this one is, is my one. It's even engraved with my name. So um, I will start the giveaway in just a second. Um, let's go to the giveaways and create and start. Um, so I believe it is type exclamation mark ticket in chat, and you will get yourself a beautiful thing, me jiggy. Um, Chunk Tom Diwa may never financially recover. Oh my God. Yeah, head on over to that. Um, Chunky, yeah, go do that because that is, um, that is, oh, it's so pretty. Um, yeah, please. <laughs> no, you can't have mine, Omi. It's mine. Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, head on over, type exclamation mark ticket in chat and head to wootenforge.com if you fail to win one this evening because they're very, very pretty and I use mine all the freaking time. Um, well, people friends uh, and, and other assorted uh, beings, um, we need to do our introductions, don't we? We need to tell everybody who the heck we are. Um, I also want to have a just a nod to Scorpidorp in chat. We haven't seen you in ages, buddy. It's good to have you back. Um, yeah. So who the fuck is everybody? Rachel, who Ooh. the fuck are you? Hello everyone, my name is Rachel Fuka. I'm a writer, actor, and creative trash at large. You can find me on assorted social media mm. at Rachel Fuka, and you can find the book that I wrote, The Rings of Mars, right here on the internet or in Josh's hand. It's it's sci-fi shenanigans. They're in a spaceship, they're trying to get somewhere, but there's a saboteur. It's very exciting. If that sounds oh, like it's up your alley, us. buy it. Let listen. It's not it a spoiler, it's on fine. the back of the book, I think, so. Yeah, it's, if it's in the blurb, it's not a spoiler, okay? So buy it if you Aww. want. It'd be cool if you did. They'll be very treasure at large. Yeah. That's so terrible. Yeah, let's no. go check it out. That's right. It's pretty bloody good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, all righty. Um, yes, that is very true and accurate. Mitch, tell us about yourself. Uh, how are you going, everybody? I am... Mitch Earnshaw. You can find me on the Twitter at Mitch <clears throat> underscore Earnshaw. You can also find me on Twitch at Mitch underscore Earnshaw. I think something along those lines. Uh, and this is where you actually find me on Twitch, though, all the time on uh, Roll for Damage with these amazing people here, um, where I do my Dan Dangus. And I love my Dan Dangus with these and beautiful all, people. We love your Dan Dangus, too. All righty, Dan, tell us about yourself as well, your Dan Dangus person. I don't know. <laughs> Hello, I am Dan, and according to 9 out of 10 doctors, I'm pretty sure Dan Dangus is not for you. Um, <laughs> from that, you can find me here on Twitch chat uh, as DRAB <laughs> and here on Humblewood also uh, this coming Wednesday for Avatar. Same channel, different time slot or same time slot different day um aside from that yeah i'm i'm here 
uh, please stay healthy. <laughs> What's your dangus? This is a weird one. Uh, like we've had some weird intros, but Dean Dangus, stay healthy, everybody, and buy Rachel's book. AJ, tell us about yourself. Hi, I am AJ Winters, the creative bean from Perth, WA. Um, I make world building mm. videos every Sunday over on Winter's Tales, where I'm building a world one step at a time for a D&D game that I will host and DM next year. We've already started production meetings. I'm very excited. So stay up to date with all that on my social media. You can find me here on Monday nights and I am also in the Wednesday night uh, one shot avatar campaign. It's um, a six very shot. Bad. It's a six shot, uh, but I, I play a very cute character with a schoolgirl crush on Axel's character and it is the most adorable thing in the world. So cute. come check it out. Yeah. Uh, and I be Josh the Pirate. Uh, you can find my face and voice here on Roll for Damage uh, on Monday nights where I DM Humblewood and I program One Shot Wednesdays. Um, you can also, if you want more of my, that old sexy face and voice, maybe sexy, I don't know, your call, uh, here on Twitch uh, and Corsairs Cove, uh, my own channel uh, where I run more Humblewood uh, with another crew but set in the same world. So contiguous timelines, very confusing, over uh, on Thursday nights. Same time, different place. Uh, if you want more D&D from me, then you can check out the podcast There Be Dragons, where I play the infamous and deadly pirate Skan Felspar, and his little dragon Hrush. Uh, we have just had, we had a session, we had session 60, I think, five. Uh, we're a little bit behind on the release schedule. Uh, we released season, session 31 uh, recently, and session 32 should be coming out soon. Um, to, to tune in for session 31 because there was apparently a bag of dicks. Um, like it was a lot of jokes about a bag of holding full of dildos. Not sure exactly what the context was. It was recorded over two and a half years ago. Uh, other than that, Paparotica, my two handed um, puppet sex show, will be back uh, in Fringe. I mean, it's puppets talking about sex, not enacting it. I want to be clear. Um, at Fringe this year, um, coming uh, episode seven of it, we'll be back. Um, and I'm going to stop talking now because anything. There's more a lot of dangus. There's a lot I mean, of dangers. We need to, we need to, yeah, some D and D. Okay, that's who we are. Um, I must also remind our confident, straight-backed, and possibly even orthopedic audience to please like, follow, and subscribe. All the things we have, all the socials, and you can catch up all the episodes you missed on YouTube. It's also worthy to note the spell fire bar down the bottom of the screen. Any donations, bits, and subs go to fill it up. And when it gets full, we roll on the deck of Manny's Harrow deck. And we love it when that happens. Wee! Okay. Well, I think it would be just jolly for someone to stop off and uh, talk into the void for a few moments. Mm. For it. I do believe I've got this one. Uh, so, uh, it'll be a bit later in the evening when we're all sitting around kind of like a campfire together. Um you know, during the festivities and suddenly Nevermore will stand up. One moment I feel it coming over me. Ooh. Okay. Strap yourselves in, everybody. I'm about to do something cool. Okay. All right, I yeah. just stare off into the void. Like every, I, I, I'd like to think that Kral's there, some yeah. other bandits are st sitting around as well. Yeah. We're just are. like in the middle of discussion. <clears throat> Building so, some mending, oh, amending what's, what's, some what's going on. So, we'll let him do we it. We began after. last session approaching the mind on our journey to acquire Halvasite for the crafting of magical things. We'd been informed that bandits may have claimed the territory, and sure enough, I gesture around the campfire. Mr. <coughs> Stabby, Mr. Stabby Face himself is atop the wall surrounding the mine, looking ugly as ever. <laughs> Luckily for us, Trish disarmed him with her filthy bandit mouth, and Kral <laughs> is sensible and insightful, and realized we weren't here for a fight. He let us in to chat in person. He even gave his sympathies about my father's passing. I turn to him. I respect that. I turn to the rest of them. He is clearly a great leader. We all spoke, and he informed us that a magma elemental was haunting the lower depths of the mine. One that we would have to deal with to get to the Halvasite. He offered to accompany us to give us a better chance of succeeding. 
Before we went down into the mine, uh, Kral's doctor healed my shoulder up just a little bit. So it was feeling slightly better. Still not 100% there, I might add. Uh, <laughs> kind of like peering over at the doctor. Um, then we uh, descended into the mine, um, finding a, a large lava elemental at the bottom of the mines, uh, near some pools of lava. It seemed to be trying to make its way back to the elemental planes. With my intelligence and impressive skills, I was able to determine there weren't any gates around. And unfortunately, short of pulling off some miracle, the decision was made to dispatch it so that it may hopefully return to the other planes. Jude, using their intelligence and impressive skills, elected to try and communicate with the elemental, not knowing the language of Terran. It went as expected and combat ensued. Trish was knocked unconscious. I was almost knocked out. Jude healed. And sure Benick thought they'd get creative and note everybody jumped on a lava elemental that was in the middle of a pit of lava. Everybody survived. We dispatched the elemental and luckily for us, uh, its head was full of helvesite. Uh, which Jude mined out for us with their impressive skills once more. Uh, Kral thanked us, told us that we were incredible, that he respected us, and that he would be one of our staunchest allies for life. Don't remember uh, that We either. then got back to the surface, healed up, and were offered an evening of festivities with the wonderful people we find ourselves surrounded by once more. And also... Jude showed Portia her muffin. <laughs> yep, and out of context, that's And then I'll just sit back down again. <laughs> Beautiful. <clears throat> Kral turns to Portia and goes, you've been getting up to your old tricks again. Um, <clears throat> Ooh, Portia. <laughs> Ooh. Um, yeah, that was a, a, a succinct and it, like, yeah, it, it's never been exactly <laughs> confirmed whether or not those are canon or not. So... <laughs> Like actually happen in the world or not? <laughs> so, and we'll see <clears throat> that way, Josh. Yeah, and we'll It'll leave it. Stay that a way. mystery. That's it. Um, okay. Well, mateys, um, may your magic muffins convert the unbelievers, and all of the players, all of your players, surprise you with awesome fan art as we head tremulously at first, and then with mounting heat and passion into the humble wood. Okay. So where we left the party, as as Nevermore accurately pointed out, Jude had just built a shrine to Gaspard. Um, <clears throat> Nevermore had managed to get out of doing any mining and had teamed up with Benick to do some small home repairs uh, while, while Trish had gotten an update on what went on after the founding of the Wildwood Brigade from an old acquaintance, Carrie. Um, <clears throat> the former bandits are preparing to throw a bit of a party in thanks for getting rid of the lava elemental uh, that have been blocking their attempts to mine the mine, and you're being treated warmly by basically everybody here. Is there anything you wish to do in the evening? Bless you. Silence. The silence of sneezing. <laughs> He's going <laughs> off in, in silence. Um, if there um, isn't anything whew. specifically that anybody wants to do, I would remind whew. you that you brought the head of the elemental up because it had a thing in it, not because it contained halvesite. Yeah, the body. That's the head right. The head had like a gem. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um. Well, then after making my shrine, I'm gonna tap away at the head until I reach whatever's in it. All right. Um. Yeah. Uh. Jude, this is um a similar deal to the uh, uh what trish did with the bush uh this is a sort of um, yeah um uh, ex extraction rules um you can ask for assistance from anybody um uh, or anybody can offer assistance if they see Jude just hacking away at this head um with uh, how would you go about it because it's going to be an arcana check with either dex or intelligence neither of I which mean, are Jude's particular strong suit i want to um, help I'll help. 
it's like you know it's a dead body it's like how difficult can that be that's true um benek um so yeah the the standard the the rule i use the heliana's guide to monster hunting rules for um uh, item harvesting basically um so one of you can be the assessor and one of you can be the carver jude isn't really carving she's got a pickaxe but beyond that yeah it's a dex check if you're proficient in arcana and then you can add your proficiency bonus if not just a straight dex um benek you can make an arcana check with intelligence to uh, determine how to get it out the best. Um, and we add the numbers together, and if they beat the arbitrary DC I've already set. Yeah, I'll do the I'll do the decks. <laughs> but I Correct. don't have Arcana. Very well, you are the carver then, certainly. All right, here I go. How, please. <clears throat> Natural 20. <laughs> 20 plus six. Like I said, Dude, don't God, fuck it it's up. a dead body. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, and a 12 from Jude. Um, look, I, wow. So, um, Jude, as you're hacking away, you managed to prize the first one out. But as you do, and you're sort of holding it up, it is a small gem. Um, it looks, uh, it's, inside of it looks like there is a fire but like a, a, a picture of fire Ooh. um and Ooh. but as you turn it it's an odd it's it's an unevenly faceted gemstone um but as you turn it and you see through each ge each facet the fire appears to flicker like real flames ah. oh, oh cool i'm glad it didn't look like a frog <laughs> no <laughs> no rocks that look like frogs for you come back one year um <laughs> <laughs> um, however, Benick, with your nat 20, you notice there is a second uh, oh. that you point out to Jude, and between the two of you, you work out how to extract another. So I was only going to give you one, but a nat 20, I'll give you a pair. <laughs> um, uh, Benick, I will allow you also that nat 20 to tell you what they are and do. This is an ember gem. Okay. Um, they have two or three different ways you can utilize them um, that you can think of. Straight off the bat, you know that looking at them, if thrown with some force, they will explode. Uh, doing mechanically 3d8 fire damage uh, and knocking people within five feet back on a DC 11 strength check. So it's a grenade. Um, <clears throat> or they can be used to treat a weapon um, adding to, or a quiver of arrows, adding to their damage potential. This, however, doesn't last. It's not a permanent treatment, or you can uh, put it into a weapon, uh, like actually make it part of, forge a new weapon with it, part of it, um, and that will increase the weapon's damage potential. But basically the trick is the, the damage will scale down the longer the effect will last for. Is, is functionally the trick. So you can get one big blast or you can get a short amount of pretty decent damage bonus or a small amount of permanent damage bonus is the three different sort of things you can do with it. Um, yeah, and you have a pair of these Ember Gems. DM, mm -hmm. if I were to make a flute out of the gem, would it also cause more damage? The flute? <laughs> Um, Hypothetically. Is in carve a flute out of it? Yeah. <laughs> um, you would, Jude, I think you wouldn't have the faintest idea. It's a neat idea, but you have not the faintest idea how to go about it. I don't if think you would, If you would, if you would, if you, uh, if you said to Bennick about it, Bennick would probably suggest that you talk to somebody at the, um, at the avium. Hmm. Uh, maybe your brother. Ooh. Yeah, the enchanters probably know. <clears throat> I don't know if you told I... me, so rescind that. <laughs> yeah. Do you think I could make a float out of this? Uh, I mean, I guess suppose you can. I don't see why not. That's not the three primary usually um how you use it, but I don't see why not. It's just the material. Um, Benick, you would know that doing something like that to it could easily cause it to explode. Um, but you might be able to make a flute out of it. <laughs> you know what? 
I don't want to cross the dreams. <laughs> I'll just say like it might explode, but like so that's all like I'm like, hey, but are you gonna get a flute anyway? Yeah. Sh- Shannon Hoss, I really love carve a flute out of a grenade. Love it. Love everything about it. <laughs> I mean, I know I would if I was Jude. Um, yeah. Have In you told emergency. Jude what they do? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell Jude. So it, you can, should... it's it explodes if you throw it as something hard enough. Maybe I don't shake it then. Uh, yeah, you I know mean, it has to be thrown fine. with some force. But, it has yeah. to hit something. What don't do I like, do with them? Don't like do this. That's what? terrible. Very bad idea. <laughs> do, I, do I put them in my bag? I mean, you can't... Uh, yeah, sure. Like, it's just... But how do we carry them? They're fairly stable. Yeah, it's fine as long. I mean, don't it, drop the off a cliff is okay. onto the bag. Okay, yeah. I'll put them in my bag. Okay, you can also like use it like on a weapon or make a weapon fire. Ooh, like a fire oh, sword. The yeah. other thing you can do with them is make fire resistance potions. Or the fire resistance potions. Those ones you remember those from your last. Ooh. Our last trip, yeah. Yeah. Um, you can probably make two potions out of one of them. However, none of you possess the skill. Um, if you took them to an alchemist, an alchemist would basically say, I'll take that and I'll give you a fire resistance potion because I can make two out of it. I'll keep one and you keep one and that's and no, no, no payment sort of situation would be the way. Oh. Or if you could do it yourself or find someone to do it for free, you get two. Um, there's a a crystal become a potion some alchemy bullshit i'm not that um versed in it does that mean that we drink crystals i guess so yeah you do know sugar is a crystal right what no it's a crystal (gasps) could you make jewelry out of sugar Yes. yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, never more. J- Trish, do you have anything you would like to do this evening? Chatting, yakking it up by the fire with my old Hang pals up. and some new pals. Yeah. Um, yeah. Much Kral... my plan as well. I'll socialize. Yeah, cool. Um, Kral would then, um, actually, Nevermore, he would come and sit next to you. In fact, no, um, there's, there's an order of these things. It, first, so, um, after the food has all been served, um, and everyone has had a good feed, uh, it's sort of getting into the late later evening now, um, they made sure to keep some pretty raw shit for Bennick, um, and, um, <clears throat> Kral stands up. <clears throat> uh, after Nevermore's bizarre performance, um... <laughs> um I can yeah I've I will just make a slight alteration to the music quickly. Just remember staunchest allies. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Um well funny you should mention it. Um so yeah, uh he, he looks at you like that was weird. Um <clears throat> my friends, uh we've all been through a lot and trust is something that sometimes hard to find, particularly for me. <laughs> Um, and at this, he gives a rueful smile, and there is a chuckle from the crowd. Um, and, uh, yeah. But I think it's important to try and find it. And especially with those who have proved themselves worthy of it. Jude, Trish, Bennick, Nevermore. You've proven yourselves worthy of my trust. We've disagreed before. (laughs) And the audience chuckles again. (laughs) And I think we probably still do, to be honest. (laughs) But for what it's worth, you have my gratitude and my trust and my friendship, if you'll have it. And if not, the other two things will have to do. (laughs) And my friends, I think seeing as these people, it's, it's these people we have to thank for reopening the mine and 
in a very real sense, making this whole enterprise possible. I think we should give them the honor of naming this place. Something better than Shaft 17 PH. So, if you'll oblige us, doesn't have to be right away, but give it some thought. I think I speak for all of us when I say we'd be honored. Friends, the heroes of the wood. Stand up and, and bow for everybody. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you you do that, and yeah, they um. I raise my. I guess I don't know what they have. Whatever raw thing I have, to, like a wood, a glass. <laughs> sure. And me a muffin. <laughs> Um, they all drink. Uh, it's mostly moonshine, what you're drinking. Um, it's rough, but fun. Um, probably not to Nevermore's sensibilities at all, but I don't actually know if Nevermore drinks. Uh, he, <clears throat> you know what? He, he'd probably get peer pressured into having a little bit of a drink. Um, I'm sure we'll try. And I, 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 would, I would like to, <laughs> I'd almost like to make a uh, constitution check to see whether or not Nevermore gets drunk in some way. So if you want to if you want to set a DC for that, and then if he yep. if I fail it, I'll start Done. role playing getting drunker. Yeah, noted. I think That's a night. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, it, you, you're feeling it. You're definitely feeling it. I want to roll for it. Roll for drunk. <clears throat> roll yeah. for drunk. The uh, the dex <laughs> the, the, the save is a thirteen. Benek has the constitution of a. Oh uh, wow, Trish. Oh, God. Trish is having a lovely time catching up with some old friends. She wasn't that close with Carrie before, but she is now. Carrie and you are like besties. Um, there is also, and you hadn't seen them before, Trish, but there is a an old servant man uh, called Trevally. Uh, he is the chef here. He, he's the one preparing the, the meal, um, and he's a really nice guy. Uh, that you remember from before. He wasn't a bandit bandit, but he was like a member of the, he was a non-fighting member of the coalition. Right. Uh, he worked and he was, he would basically, he, and he made sure whenever you were uh, around that he, you got special treats. He treated you good. He treated you friend. He, he like, he was treated you like a niece or something like that. Like, um, and uh, yeah, he's, he keeps slipping you more alcohol than everybody else is getting um <clears throat> which is probably why you're getting fucked up jude yeah you are also a little bit drunk um i'm not gonna say hugely drunk because um there's a reason um but yeah um and uh early uh yeah um so never more um a little while later kral comes over and sits next to you and uh he says i was thinking about your questions about your eye um, oh yes, yes. I don't know. I don't know what was up with the knife. Um, I swear to you, for whatever value you place on my word, I I had no idea the blade was dodgy in some way. But regardless, I I left it at the crest. If you want to know more about it, well, it was a gift from Frey. Oh, um, it was a gift from Frey. Okay, yeah. interesting. The girl was very dear to me, but. Honestly, I came here for a fresh start. I left all of that behind. So if you're wanting to find it, you'll need to talk to someone in that organization. Now, I am forbidden from communicating directly with any of my former comrades. It was a condition of my release. But if you were to put this in the hand of Shyla Den, who, as I understand it, has just been made the head of the Wildwood Brigade in Alderheart, she will probably be able to get that knife passed into your possession in a couple of weeks. And he offers you a letter. You're welcome to read it. It's not sealed, though. Thank you. You should know that handing it on is technically against, if not the letter of the law, then the spirit of it. Losh, Mo. He smiles. <laughs> I'll pass. I'll pass it. I appreciate. I appreciate that, Kralin. Seriously. I really do, I thank you for really not holding things my father did against me, and I just appreciate that, and it meant a lot to me when you said what you said, um, that you're sorry for my loss, so thank you. And in the spirit of giving up an old life and starting a new one, he offers you a hand to shake. I apologize for the eye. It was 
Well, if we all acted like that, no one would be seeing straight. I hope. <laughs> nice. I hope, I hope that might help. And he, that, that, yeah, he, he it, that, gestures that, to the letter. Um, thank you. Like, I, thank you, Crow. Um, I you, appreciate it. And do you read it? What I, uh, I will have a peer at it, but before it ducks off, I'll just say, what I said earlier in my ramblings about allies for life, I feel like I've found one. I did feel that way about you, well, way back when we very first met, but circumstances led to things happening as they did. Mm. Um, but I can see your yes. You're one of the ones. You're a man of conviction. The... You're one of the ones with the heart in the right place. It's taken me a little while to mm. see that, but I appreciate it. Thank you, Grav. Um, go get me another drink. <laughs> you, you peasant. And he, <laughs> he chuckles because he uh, he at least assumes you're meaning this in jest. Um, yes, and of course. <laughs> he does so, but he does not come back and sit next to you. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, when I you have a peek drink. at the yeah. letter, uh, he does bring back a drink for you. But, uh, oh, um, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. If you have a peer at the letter, it says, shy, uh, <clears throat> shy, just asking a small favor. There's a gilded parrying dagger in a chest in the armory at the crest. You know the one. I'd appreciate it if it could find its way into the bearer, the hand of the bearer of this letter. I'm sure they could put it to better use than me. Thanks. It is not signed. I will just say one more thing. I would ask Kral one more thing. Hmm. Was I the first person that you stabbed with that? <laughs> not by a long shot. Oh, okay. Well, okay, that, that answers the question. Thank you. I haven't... I didn't... It's a parrying dagger. It wasn't used mostly for like it was the offhand weapon um you maybe were the first person mm. um killed a few elementals with it but okay. uh, by the time i by the time Frey gifted that one to me we weren't doing a lot of banditry anymore that's interesting thank you crow i don't know where she got it though i'm afraid um yeah he heads off cool. um towards the end of the night jude yeah you feel a gentle tap on your shoulder it's portia oh hi um <clears throat> hi. Wow. i um i was gonna do a thing but i wondered if you might like to do it with me I was kind of getting the vibe off you that you it might be something you were interested in. What thing? Um, it'd be easier if I showed you. Okay. Um, she takes your hand, Jude, uh -huh. and leads you into the shadows at the edge of the camp, just under the palisade. Did you in know this is made from moon? She giggles. <laughs> she goes, ah, I've actually got something a bit better than that. Um, and uh, you find yourself in front of the shrine you made earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, once there, she begins taking off her cloak. Um, she says, um, you might want to take off your armor. This can get a bit messy. Uh, okay. Um, she strips down to just a robe. Mm -hmm. uh, just sort of the, the, the robe underneath her, uh, her other garments and vestments. Uh, she is a cleric, so she has like some armor and weaponry on top of it. Um, and then she reaches into her pack for something. Um, what do you do? Anything? No, I stand in my pantaloons. Um, cool. She goes, uh, she removes a small bowl, a bundle of herbs, and a small amphora of wine. Um, and then she kneels on the floor in front of you, puts the bowl on the floor, and fills it with herbs, and puts the wine next to it. She looks up at you and says, joining me? 
for the herbs? Sure. And the and the drink? Yeah, okay. Is it like whiskey? No, it's wine. Okay, what's that? Um made with grapes. Ooh. It's juice. Grape juice. It's basically a juice. Like an alcoholic juice. Um and as you kneel down, she takes your hands in hers and she places yours and hands to get hers together over the fire. Uh, sorry, over the uh, the bowl. And you feel a warmth as the herbs catch fire in the bowl. Um, and as you lift your hands up, the, the fire isn't, doesn't hurt you. It definitely licks your hands. You can feel it. Um, the fire glows with a slight bluish tinge to it. Um, and the smoke coming off the herbs is spicy and a, you feel a little bit woozy not not like you're losing control of anything but like your head is floating off your shoulders a little bit <laughs> you feel just a tiny bit other um she looks into your eyes and her voice little more than a whisper and says is there anything you want to do before we start no Okay. What are we doing? You'll see. Okay. Um, she takes the wine um, and takes a good long draft of it from the amphora and then with both hands, hands it to you. Try some. <laughs> um, it is a, a heavy mellow like a a, 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 a full-bodied red. Um, and she takes the amphora back from you and pours the rest of it onto the herbs, onto the boiling her uh, the burning herbs, which immediately go out. And the steam coming off it now is even more spicy. It smells great. It smells really, really nice. Um, yeah. And <clears throat> yeah, it extinguishes the flames she goes now for the fun part she grins and you can feel the air is almost electric as she starts to knead the stuff in the bowl like start mushing it all together the wine and the herbs um with her fingers when she's finished she playfully dabs a small amount on your nose <laughs> um and says right let's make this perfect then she turns to the shrine and with both hands covered in mush from the bowl, she begins to smear it over the image you painted. Oh. Um, and after a couple of swipes, she turns back to you and says, you want to join? This was your idea after all. Are we painting? Yeah. Sure. I mush my hands in the bowl. Yeah. Jude, can you roll me a religion check with advantage, please? Yeah. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> it's a shame. You do have a reroll. My reroll. <laughs> <laughs> and nine. Wow. That's some shock and rolling. I'm good at religion. <laughs> yeah. Weirdly. Um, yeah. I just would have thought four rolls you'd be able to get over a ten. Wow. Um, so, um, yeah, you do that. Um, nine. <laughs> Any, yeah. Um, Jude, you notice that where you smear the mush from the bowl, the image you drew comes into clear and crystal focus as though the mighty Gaspard was there, reflecting in the stone. Your original job wasn't bad, but it wasn't um, an amazing replica of the person. This is. The image appears to change slightly from time to time, sometimes appearing male, other times female. <laughs> wow. And yeah, the whole thing is quite calming and serene. Um, but as you apply the last of the juice from the bowl, 
you hear a gasp from Portia. Turning, you see the image you've been creating in full 3D, standing behind you and smiling softly. <laughs> it's Gaspard. Their form slowly again shifting between male and female. Wordlessly, he spreads his arms and he embraces Portia, and then you. <laughs> you close your eyes for a minute, enjoying the hug, and as you open them, he is gone, and it's Portia hugging you instead. <laughs> she looks up at your eyes and says, wow, you weren't kidding. Yeah. Talk about a, talk about a spiritual experience. <sighs> Um, she steps back from you and like wipes her forearm along her forehead and um, says, nice work, and offers you a towel um, and begins to clean her hands with one as well. It's a towel for your hands and nothing else, you filthy person, you. <laughs> Make it very sexual, Josh. I'm just saying. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay. Welcome, welcome, Raiders. Well, welcome, Raiders. We have welcome been Raiders, raided. <laughs> Is this Strata GM? Raid! Thank you so much, Strata GM. Thank you so much for the raid. We have just had a uh, an experience. Have we not, Jews? <laughs> I had a lot of fun writing that. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Jude, looking at the shrine, uh, yeah. your, your little pile of rocks that you painted a picture of Gaspard on, it is now, your your paladin senses are tingling. It is now consecrated. Cool. You have, um, yeah, Portia and you, team team Gaspard worshippers, have consecrated this shrine here. Um, yeah, thanks so much for the raid, Dread. Have a good evening, buddy. Take care. Looking forward to con save. Um, <clears throat> cool. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Oh. She That's says no. So much fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, have you ever done anything like that before? Con con consummated? No. <laughs> she goes, oh, well, now you have. Now you know how you do it. If you ever want to make another one, similar deal. The herbs don't really matter. It's more the intention uh, behind them. But that's the that's the stuff I like to use because it's got it, it smells really nice. It does. It does really smell nice. Um, yeah, cool. Well, um, what's that doing? Um, yeah, she says, well, um, my place is the little one over there. I chose it because I didn't want to have to share with anybody else while we build enough houses for everyone. Um, but you'd be welcome if you don't want to sleep outside tonight. Um, and she's a bit shyly, she actually, like, she's like, see you later, and, and walks to, goes to her house. Bye! Um, um to yeah. Turn back to the statue of Gaspard and just have, like, a little quiet moment to myself. Sure, definitely. Do you do I anything, say anything while you're there, or, yeah? Yeah, I'm gonna have a little <laughs> monologue. <laughs> Feel free. Um, hi, Gaspard. Thank you so much for introducing me to Portia. I like meeting other paladin, I mean, supporters of Gaspard. It's really nice, but it's nice seeing you too. Thank you again for the muffin. I have not thought of a question yet, but I will, I will think on it more. <laughs> okay. Much love. Bye. I run away. <laughs> You do that. Um, cool. Uh, unless anybody has anything else they'd like to do tonight, we take a long rest. And you, you know, you came over, you came over here, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> Nevermore's just like, like rambling drunkenly. All right, all right. <laughs> Nevermore, settle down, settle down. Don't mind um, him. Help, please. <clears throat> Why? <laughs> <laughs> you hold back Nevermore's feathers uh, yeah. by the latrine trench, Benick. I, um, I, I hold the feathers with one hand and I drink my drink with the other hand. Like, yeah. I thought you were like the son of a super great adventurer and you can't like handle <laughs> your drink. 
Oh, shut up, then it can just help me, please. Damn, um, I've already got me, enough of a headache. <laughs> um, please, I, I rubbed, I rubbed herbs on a statue. Cool. Yeah. Why'd you do that? Oh, Portia took me into the little shadowy part over there, and there was this little ceremony, and we consummated. You what? Yeah, the statue. Oh my god! Oh, uh, did you have fun? Was it good? It was really good. Yeah, really yeah. messy. Yeah, well, it could be. Like, it's it's better if it is messy. You know, you know, you're doing it right if it's a little bit messy. Yeah, I think so too. Ah, uh, girl, I'm so happy for you. Bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> Trish, she doesn't so smell exciting. like sex. She smells like smoke. <laughs> oh, jet beans do it weird. That's fine. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Oh my god! Thank you. <sighs> oh, the power of Gispar, do you know? Oh, was it like a like a like a holy experience? Yeah, like spiritual. Wow. Yeah. Off to a good start. I love that. Yeah. In the, the first time I consummated was not like. Oh. Have you consummated? <laughs> oh yeah, loads of times. Oh, wow. Yeah. I did not know you were religious. <laughs> <laughs> not really. But you know, consummating's fun. I'm glad, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you had a good time and I'm glad it went well. You were having a whole, a whole situation, but I'm so glad it went well. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go to sleep. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm it can be pretty tiring. Yeah. Mm. Tuck me in, Bedek. <laughs> oh, fuck you. You don't need to get tucked in. Tuck yourself in. Bedek, please. <laughs> I need you. You're not helpless. Come on. I need you, Bedek. Please tuck me in. <laughs> Jude, where do you... I'm just... Fine. I, fuck I, you. I'm <laughs> only asking um, out of curiosity, do you sleep with everybody else outside or do you, do you um, take Portia up on her offer? This is not necessarily a a do you want to go and then consummate something. <laughs> it's. I think, I think Jude has a really hard time choosing. Jude's like, I don't want to be rude because I got an invite, but I want to stay with my friends. Fair. She, yeah. um, yeah, you don't get the impression that she would be in any way offended if you did. Okay. No, I sleep on Trish's tail. Sure. Okay. Okay, well, um, I think it's an important thing to mention that that night we get a level up. <gasps> oh. oh my god, <laughs> it's yeah. been a while, dude. It has been a little while. Like we, you didn't level up when you defeated the aspect of fire. This is this is your level up. Um, I do milestones, and this one's a good one. Um, and also, like, important because you're probably going somewhere where it's going to be useful to be level six. Um, so, um, yeah, <laughs> tell me a little bit about trajectory, Benick. What are you going to be doing? We're gonna we're gonna do the. I like to do it with the audience listening. So, Benick, what's 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 are you going to be sticking? What are you doing? Uh, yes, right. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> should be able to cast the high level wizard spells. Also, I'm gonna Absolutely. stab things anyway, so yeah. Totally. That's it. Staying, staying abjuration wizard. Yeah. Um, cool. In which case, um, talk me through what you get at level six. Okay. Uh, pretty sure. Hold on. <laughs> I want to get my facts straight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, six level. Oh, I get my. Arcane Tradition, which is Projected Ooh. Ward. Nice. Yeah, it lets me use my extra Abjuration HP to shield my friends as Sick. a reaction, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I I get one extra third level spell slot, which to be honest, really nice because I keep hasting myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no cantrips. And two spells. Two spells. Three spells. Um, well, you Into don't have spell to tell us that what you're taking. Died. Yeah. Now I'm keeping that a secret. Yeah. That's a secret. That's a secret for me. 
<laughs> cool. Um, all righty. Well, so the way we do level ups uh, with me, um, so Dan, you can either roll the dice yourself or you can have, you can pick two people in chat to roll your hit dice for you and you can choose the better one. Okay. Well, in the spirit of the humble words, surely I go to the people, to of the course. people out there. To the people. Who would you like to roll for you? Uh, one for sure. Scorp. The Scorp? Yes. Scorp. You can do it. It's Exclamation mark present roll for you for space back. six. In chat, please, Scorp. And who else? Oh, it's time to scroll. Keep scrolling. Because I feel like I don't want to take what other people might name. It's three? It's not bad. You could do better, but not a bad start, Scorp. I'll I'll take it, Scorp. That's better than one. It is better than one. It's a it little is better yeah, than it's one. average. Or Omi? We can... I'll, I'll snatch Omi out of people. Omi, Omi can, we get a, can we get a, a D6 in chat, please? Beat a three. And we rolled a two out of 30 last time, so, so let's see. That's what we want. <gasps> Five. Hey, oh. Omi is oh. your boy. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, yeah. Five. We'll yeah. take it. Fucking Omi's just crushing the rolls left, thank right, you, and center. Scott. Thank Omi you, Omi. Is, Omi is nailing it. Um, thanks very much, Scott. Nicely done, Omi. Cool. Bannock, what's your con bonus as well? Because that's, that's probably two. Decent. So that gives me plus seven. Seven, seven more hit points is pretty good. Um, yeah, alrighty. Uh, Jude, what you yeah. doing? Jude is going to multi-class to bard. See us what? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, all right, in which case, um, yeah, that's that's a big one as well. Yeah. Um, Jude, can you can you talk me through what you, what's happening to you at Bard, for, for, for level of Bard? No fucking clue. <laughs> in which case we will we will oh. we will resolve that during the week. Um, yeah, um, it's it's quite a bit. Um, yeah. You're gonna get some some uh, another I'm skill going proficiency. To get some more spells. Some spells, some cantrips. Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe you get jack of all trades. Ooh. Or is that level two? Oh no. Might be level two. Um, but what we do definitely need is a D8 of hit points. It is um, a D10. I said. It is a D8. Oh, bard. Yeah. Bard's only D8. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. You're, you get a paladin as a D10, but you're going bards, which get D8. Oh, okay. Well, since Omi was stolen, <laughs> I took Omi. How dare you? Uh, I will go with Ragnar. Ragnar 64, please. A 1D, exclamation mark, 1D, uh, exclamation mark, roll space 8 in chat, please. And anybody else, AJ? And uh, if Nelderberry is still in chat. Nelderberry. A two from Ragnar. Ooh. Not amazing. Ragnar. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're popular, Omi. <laughs> it's okay, Ragnar. I still love you. Um, how about Nelderberry. somebody else? I don't, don't know if we've got a Nelderberry. Don't Nelder. know if Nate's stuck around. Nelderberry is in chat. But probably not listening. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not yeah. able to get to the the ex yeah. Maybe just Alrighty. lurking. Maybe they're lurking. Um, All righty. Well, we will. Um, so there is. Uh, I can claim dibs and Ada's next level. Up. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, let's have somebody else, and we'll get back to Nelderberry at another time. Okay. Uh, there's lots of things I'm going to have to have rolled tonight. Um, who else would you like, Jude? Shadow Silver's new here. Hi, Shadow Silva. Oh, I feel like we have to give it to our longtime fans. So no. I have I have to go with Shannerhoss. Shannerhoss. Oh, Dracos Wizard is here. Welcome, <laughs> Dracos Wizard. Um, yeah, Shannerhoss, can we get a, a, a 1d8 in chat, please? Dan. Going to tag everyone. <laughs> I'm being abandoned. Yeah. <laughs> um, and while we're waiting for that, let's talk about Nevermore. Nevermore is having a secret level up and is going to, uh, uh, well, Mitch, you're going to multi-class, aren't you? Correct. Um, I'm multi-classing, everybody. 
but we are not telling you cheeky little muffins just yet what he's multi-classing into but we will roll the hit dice for it uh which will give you a little bit of a clue just a little bit of a cheeky little little cheeky clue there uh so uh mitch who would you like to roll your hit dice uh yes or do you want to do it yourself joking (laughs) (laughs) uh no i would i would like people to roll for me very well. Um, I will go for you know what shadow shadow silver. You better bring it. You bring better it, shadow bring silver. it. Exclamation mark! Roll space. It is an eight. Roll space eight in chat, please. Shadow silver. You better bring it, don't you dare. Um, and then uh, five. Five's not bad. Five. I'll take a five. Five is That's the pretty average, good, which is good. Better, better than average. Uh, and if, uh, more Ithlid, more, more Ithlid. Ithlid is still there. Yeah, we can grab one of them as well. Ithild. Same again. More Ithlid. Uh, more Ithlid. Oh. Oh, the dude that I'm always like, Italy. Italy. Yeah. Uh, Ibith, uh, Person. and if more Person is not there. Oh, there, there we go. Oh. Oh, oh, one. Oh, All right, it looks like it's a five oh, for oh, Nevermore. Thank you very much, Shadow Silver. Nice try, Morthalid. Um, Thank you, Shadow. Eight, still pretty, uh, five, still pretty good with your con of plus two. I should have um, threatened Ithild more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, no, but don't don't threaten. But yeah, no, well, sneaky. So yeah, you'll, you'll see. We're, Mitch and I are going to have a bit of a discussion about exactly what that's going to look like. Um, because it's, it's a little bit complicated, but yeah, there you go. Uh, never more. Thanks very much. And Trish isn't leveling up just yet. Um, but what? we will, we will get there. Um, <laughs> Trish, there's reasons. Um, yeah, she hasn't worked as hard as everybody else. Um, this is a Trish glass is such ceiling. such a slacker in this group. This is a glass ceiling situation. Um, all right. Consummate <laughs> last night. Yeah, she should have consummated. Um, <clears throat> um cool alrighty well um in the morning you awaken and you prepare to leave uh does anyone want to say or do anything before um we we all head off yeah i want to harass Neldeberry <laughs> and <laughs> and wow. shadow horse how dare you not show up for me people in the morning <laughs> i love you both both uh, serum roll of four. <laughs> it's very kind, Serum. <laughs> Dracos has got a 33 on a D1000, which is really low. Really low. Yeah. Impressively it's low. Really low. <laughs> Dracos Wizard, would you like to roll my bard level? Now we Please, Dr- Dracos, let's get a. Yeah, let's get that. No, I mean, you've already done it. <laughs> nah, Dracos. I reckon Dracos is about to come out of the gates here with a seven. That's my call. Ooh. All right, I think he's gonna hit oh. the, the the jackpot's coming. I believe. Um. So Jude, it was what was it a three or a one? Four. What was it? Four or two? I it was a four. Let's yeah. Roll it. Let's, what, what was it? rolled a two as well. Two. Oh. Uh, so oh, it's a two. The numbers have spoken. Can I say five? No. <laughs> okay. get I really love next this, level. this, this glass get cannon next paladin. Level. <laughs> <laughs> Such a fragile paladin. <clears throat> I, I, will, I will allow um, Samuel. I've got a four. Look, I'll let you have Samuel's four if you like. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Samuel. Two extra HP. Because I'm very nice like that. Uh, she's already burned a reroll, Scott. Um, <laughs> I don't have uh, a reroll anymore. <laughs> if you fill this spell fire bar up, maybe Jude gets yeah. another reroll. I mean, that's true. <laughs> uh, we don't want that. Hello. And become something um, else. <clears throat> cool. There you are. All right. So, uh, yeah. Um, you uh, Now, how are you traveling back to the AVU? Walking. Oh, we've had a 500 Ooh, a- bitty. 500 biddies uh, to do for a 1d6 <laughs> inspiration to add to the. You don't get to add inspiration dice to your hit dice, otherwise, that's the most OP thing ever. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's just offering to pay for tunes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, if anyone can get an, like, is, is, is willing and then can get an eight, 
I'm down. <laughs> I, then there's no guarantee. There's no guarantees at all. You cannot guarantee that. We're getting dangerously close to gambling. Judy, <laughs> you re-roll, but you gotta take whatever you get. Gambling for Jude's um, hit dice. Um, um, alrighty. Yes, I, I, walking. I don't think we'll be doing anything in particular before going. Uh, well, I won't be. Um, and yes, we probably just have to walk. We we can teleport, right, gang? Yeah, from the thingy. But yeah. like the scenery, though. Hey, if oh, you wait. want a bit of a scenic stroll, sure, I'm down for that. Wait, that, good sorry. Mood. Remind me, DM, what was that? How did that work again? Sorry, the, you can the teleport, teleport back to the avium. You've got your amulets. You can use them once per. I think it's about once a week, um, but you haven't used them yet ever. So yeah, you can. You've got your special avium amulets uh, that you've I mean, got for being great. Fuck scenery. We're definitely going to teleport, right? <laughs> well, what yeah. if they're not ready? And you know, it's only been like how many days? Like three. I know we're quite efficient, aren't we? Um, but they'll have to get used to it and get over it. Let's. Uh... Yeah, also, if we walk, that means we might find that pickaxe again. I don't want that. So, um, <laughs> why you're not going to a mine now? Um, <laughs> um, all right. Uh, as you just as you go to sort of head out, um, I presume you don't teleport <laughs> from in the middle of the the square. Oh, Nelderberry needed to be a parent. Um, never mind. Not nothing important, Nelderberry. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know how long you were gone. Maybe Jude losing her, well, consummation anyway. Um, <laughs> Jude's a virgin. Yes, Proudly. definitely. In the name Cannon. of his God. Definitely. Trish um, is now fully convinced you're not, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. That's, That's so good. I was so happy with that. Um, all right, yeah. Uh, before you go, I presume you don't like teleport out from the middle of the camp because Look, you know. I'd like to camp. definitely say goodbye to Kral and everybody as well first, yeah. though. Like, you know, thank them. If, yeah, thank you for your hospitality, everybody. Thank you for not stabbing me in my sleep. For everybody who uh, fell asleep, who who had um, who got drunk. We were all drunk. Oh god. Not Benick, but everybody oh. else. Eight. Hey. Nice. Never more. You don't turn out too bad the following day. Trish, you're definitely feeling it. Jude, yeah, Oof. you felt that. You're still like woozy from the consummation last night. Yeah. It's because you were mixing your drinks, mixing your beverages. Um, I had the moon juice and the grape juice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Kral would say to you, Nevermore, um, he would say, Oh, uh, if you're heading back to the avium, let them know. They're welcome to come by Halvasite. Uh, I can give him a good deal. Any friend of Nevermore's, you know. I will pass that on, and I really, truly do hope that that you and these amazing people that you have with you uh, are left to do what you wish to do here. Uh, I hope so too. And I want you to know that. Uh, I will do what I can to make sure that that happens. I appreciate it. You deserve you to. You deserve yet? to have a. Oh, for the mine! Good oh. lord! <laughs> Shit! I completely <laughs> forgot about that. Oh, Nelderberry would have gotten an eight. No, <laughs> I'm lucky. Oh, destiny. <laughs> Brutal. Damn it! <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm Brutal. gonna do something nice now. I'm gonna oh. be extremely Ooh. nice. I am going, Jude, I want you to roll a, a D100 and say, or I'd like you to right now, say highs or lows. Ah, uh, um, highs. All right. D100, please, in chat or on um, roll 20 or wherever, basically. <laughs> oh, no. No, you don't get it. 49. 49. 49. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That is the yeah, digital this is randomizer. Like this is the digital randomizer saying, no, no, you get no hit points. <laughs> this is you a get... digital well, randomizer. Well, at least you got like, four no, and not two. 
This I guess. digital randomizer got gave you two twice, and then I gave you four, and it was like, I don't think that's right. And it was like, maybe Josh will give you the eight that Nelda Berry rolled. No. Mm. Yeah, no. two and two <laughs> equals four. What, what can I say? Two and two equals four. Two equal yes. two. Yeah, you got the whole thing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you got everything that the two people who rolled for you rolled. Uh, I yeah, look, that's Thank just the you, way. Thank you, everyone in chat. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, I hope you all agree, I was very nice. You were very um, fair, yes. All right. <laughs> Still you were very, very fair. Disappointed. <laughs> I Good. have a four. <laughs> you do. It's not the worst it could be. Plus one from your con, so five more hit points. Woo! Um, and this was only a, like, it was a bard le not level, not a paladin level as well. So, yeah, yeah you yeah. weren't going to get as many from it. Um, cool. All righty. Well, uh, so you're teleporting back. Uh, yeah. Um, do you have a, a name for the mine? Yeah. It's not, oh. they're planning on not just having a mine, it's planning on being a village. Oh, that's different. And they don't want to just call it, a, it's not just a mine. They, they're going to live here, they're going to build something. Halva City? <laughs> uh. uh... <laughs> Something oh. refuge, maybe. Ooh. Something refuge, you know, uh, to evoke you know, people wanting to get away from stuff, I suppose. I don't know. Truly, I didn't think about it. I was too busy vomiting and trying to get Benick to put me to bed. Um, <laughs> yeah, I hated that whole affair. Yeah, and you weren't very helpful at all. Thanks for nothing. Because <laughs> you are your own person. <laughs> yes, but I was in toxic. So shut up, Benick. Stop distracting us. Um, oh, well, you bad. should name it after yourself. It's your town. You're the one who's building it. Uh, as much as the idea does sort of appeal, it's what who I was, not who I want to be, you know? Mm. Fair. I feel like it's a little arrogant to name it after any about, one person. How about lack? Because it's fire. There was a fire dude, and you're all like starting anew in this mine. How about lack? Hope flare or something. Hope flare. I like it. Thanks. Don't mention it. You, I'm not good at right. naming. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> he, he he offers a hand to shake, Benick. Oh, uh, yeah, shake it. This is, seems polite. I was like, we don't have the same history that I have with the other three. I was proud to stand with you yesterday. You helped found Hope Flare. You'll always be welcome in it. All right, I might have come back for some halvesite, to be honest. <laughs> Well, we'll happily sell you some. I'll give you a good price. <laughs> That's all I can ask for, really. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. Bannock, you have inspiration. Hey, yo. Yay. Nice. All righty. <laughs> um, yell across the camp and say goodbye to Portia. Bye, oh, Portia. Por Thank Portia you for the actually... consummation. <laughs> Everyone's like. Portia... Portia dosh, dashes back over. She actually like flings the door open and is like, oh my god, I slept in. Um, <laughs> and runs over and um, stops just at you, actually, and, go, and goes like, uh, look, like she's running towards you like she's gonna hug you. And then goes, oh, and just catches herself like, oh shit, that's right. I'm still not 100% whether or not this girl was actually into me or not. Um, <laughs> and then sort of like, and offers a hug um, and says, thanks. And yeah, thanks for everything. No worries. Um, see you around? Mm-hmm. Cool. You know where to find me. Um, and uh, yeah, she sort of shyly walks back to her house. <laughs> well done, I must Did you just it. shout out consummating? What? what? Yeah. Wait, wait, Did you hmm. all hear that? Well, does that mean what I think that means? Yeah. <laughs> she never slept. She must have been worn out. It was, it was like spiritual. <laughs> mm, mm -hmm. Nice. 
do you both agree the right like you said yes and Portia also said yes that's fucking important yeah we had some uh wine and then Portia said uh it's going it's going to get messy and then she like held out her hands and we put our hands in this like mushy stuff. Okay, I don't then... think I, I need to know the actual like so details. You, you just took a bunch of drugs. Is that what you're saying? You, no. You, there's wine and herbs and. <clears throat> no. Okay. It was in the name of Gaspard. Okay. It sounds like it was a beautiful night, Nevermore. A oh, beautiful it memory. Really good too. It was like spicy, you know? All right, damn. God, wow! God, wow! I'll, uh, I'll, uh, congrats. <laughs> um, I'm glad you had fun. If not, yeah. I. Um... You want to see it? No, no I'm good. <laughs> Thank you, though. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, it's fine. You know, can we just go? Let's just move on. Yeah, I think we should on. leave. Okay. It was right um, over there. You teleport. <laughs> <laughs> you blamp out of there while it's still in the the main the, in the sort of the central campfire area of the um of hope flare um and i think there'll be a good spot for us to have a quick little breaklet um <laughs> recharge yourselves come back for another round um hope you're all having fun um we will be back in five to ten thank you so much for sticking around raiders thanks so much for coming and um yeah it looks like a lot of you stuck around so it's very very gratefully received uh no hope fl hope nothing flares up after that night or i'm certain so oh, yep um <laughs> yep all righty yeah we will be back very shortly, herpes. <laughs> thanks very much for sticking Bye. around um please please And ahoy and good day once again to ye mateys. We be back, aha, and such. Um, we are back in the word. Thank you for sticking around. Um, now, quickly, we need to mention uh, I have a small correction, um, but you've been looking at it for the last little while. Um, the code that to use at the checkout at wootenforge.com is, in fact, humble2, not humble1. One. Humble1 one won't get you shit anymore, but humble2 does. Um, <laughs> and um, if you use humble2, you can also get free engraving this week because it's Halloween and they're doing a special offer. How exciting is that? Um, Wooten Forge produced WA's finest handcrafted wooden tabletop accessories out of beautiful Australian and exotic hardwoods. This is one of them. This is actually half of one of the things we're giving away tonight. If you type exclamation mark ticket in chat, you could go into the running to win a beautiful Wooten Forge dice keeper made of Australian Jarrah. None of that fancy uh, South African Jarrah. They don't have a Jarrah in South Africa. Um, <clears throat> it's very fancy if you can get Jarrah from South Africa. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you want one of them, type exclamation mark ticket in chat and you go into the running to win one and we will draw that at the end of the episode. How exciting. Uh, the dreaded GM dropped some Raiders on as a good one tonight for them. Um, so thanks guys for sticking around. We shall get back into it now. You guys teleport back to the avium, back to the teleportarium at the avium and you sort of just uh, reappear. So it's very, um, it's actually quite, uh, I imagine there's very like um the uh thor's uh um what's the word the bifrost 
teleportation. Um, so you, you get a rune on the ground uh, that when you leave, and it's very lots of shiny lights. You see yourself, you see your people who are teleporting with around you on a rainbow bridgey style affair for about five seconds, and then you sort of arrive where in the same configuration you were standing in where you are going and the hub of the teleportation network and really the only actual working teleporter in the Hummelwood is at the top of the avium um you are you appear there you've appeared there before so you're you're yeah. familiar with the place yeah. um and uh, you are asked uh, there are perch guard there there is a three a trio of perch guard um two strig and a raptor um quite burly guys another raid monsters and mayhem thank you so much for the raid monsters and mayhem monsters and mayhem you're catching us just as we begin our second half uh we are in the humble wood and we are having a bit of a a, a, pre a preparation episode to go on the next major adventure that the groups are going on uh chuck us some follows chuck up your favorite raid emotes in chat thanks so much um, for the raid and we have a special giveaway tonight so you chose a great night to come and hang out if you type exclamation mark ticket in chat uh, you will go into the running to win a Wooten Forge Dice Keeper um, beautiful thing and uh, apparently Nelderberry says they will mm -hmm. even um, engrave it with my name why you would want my name engraved on it uh, that's entirely up to you um <laughs> <laughs> um good down to die dnd has bought a ticket good excellent nice to hear um yeah get in those tickets right so you appear at the teleportarium the perch guard come in and um brusquely but like not rudely just a little just pr perfunctorily uh check your um avian passes to make sure you're actually allowed to have done this which you are so is all g um and anybody who wants to can make either a uh, a an arcana check or a perception check. Oh, um, I'll do arcana. Other, and anybody who wants to. Mm. You can't make both, you have to pick. Mm. And Benek have made an arcana and a perception. Jude also makes a perception. Very nice, Jude. I'm not a conjurer, I don't care. Where was that before? <sighs> I'm really good at perception. You are very perceptive. Yeah. Um, Benek, uh, yeah. Um, Jude and Trish, your perception, you perceive um, that you both notice this. There are several people working in here that weren't here the last time. The last time you were here, there was just like the three perch guard guys and a single student who was here really just to oversee the magic just to make sure everything was all G, um, mm. but looked pretty bored the last time they were here. Now there is like a dozen people working on the space. Um, uh, did Nevermore do an arcana? He did a 17. Nevermore, your arcana check. Benek, I'm afraid you didn't roll particularly high. Um, I, don't, I don't, but, don't care. <laughs> oh, actually, you had advantage because you're a wizard. Uh, 19 works as well. Oh. Uh, or, 17 and mind, 19 get both, both get it. Um, you do care. Um, yeah, both of you notice that the um you see more than just with your eyes uh never more particularly because of you can see through your irrelev eye um that the glyphs and wardings on the walls there are more than there were last time uh the wardings are physical things that uh, they're physical carvings into the walls and that is what trish and jude have noticed are being uh, seen to these guys appear to be making modifications uh, and um, repairs to these warding sigils um, but you can also see uh, runes much like you know the, the furious ra rune the, the the things that move but don't move um, there are some of them that and there weren't any before or very very few there are now lots mm -hmm. Um, sort of ethereally, you have to look through the eyes of a magic user to be able to perceive them, deliberately perceive them, um, ethereally, like running across the walls, moving without seeming to move. Who um, needs drugs here, hmm. Benick? <laughs> Isn't it beautiful sometimes? I wonder if they added do... it for us. Well, I mean, I, they're probably uh, just doing it to buff up the defenses. Jude, you would also notice that one of the students is familiar. <clears throat> oh. One of the one of the people doing the work on the walls is familiar. It's Gel Placenta. Uh, pl uh, yeah, Gel Placenta. Placenta. <laughs> it happened. Gel, it happened. Gel Placenta. 
<laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> Del Platana. I even wrote you? it down, knowing that I would do that. Uh, <laughs> um, Gel Platena. <clears throat> hi, Del. Um, yeah, she sees you and says, hi, Jude. What does she say? <laughs> Uh, it is my turn. D -d 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 um, oh, hey, Jude. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. <laughs> what are you doing? Other people can communicate with her as well. <laughs> no, what? No, no, no. This is a conversation. Benick, you actually would know Jael Platena. Um, like, she's a couple of years below you, but, like, is a fellow student and um, very... What's her school? Like, a, uh, oh, she's, a she's a sorcerer, right? Or something? She's a conjuration specialist, I think. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Oh, wrong accent. Um, <laughs> All right, I will, I will save AJ going... <laughs> Hey, but that jail. being said, I'm trying to remember. I think, yeah, she's, she's, I believe she is a sorcerer, but she is a conjuration specialist. Oh, hey, Benick. Have you been working on this? Yes. Me and my cohort, cohort are reinforcing the protection runes in the teleportarium. The dean oh. didn't say why, but I think it's maybe got to do with the fact that all of us students are being sent home for two weeks. A sort of like an early holiday. Mm, don't know anything about that. <clears throat> okay. You, uh, you had heard that. I don't know. I if know. You're lying. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. I know. I was lying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you know like... more than I know? Because it seems really strange. The idea to use a teleporter, like, it doesn't usually deal with such a heavy load, taking all the students back and such. Is this your pay grade, Joe? What? Like knowing this stuff, is it something you need to know for work or? I just thought it was odd. I don't know. I mean, it is Jill's... odd though, I agree. Jill's good at what she does, so. We could just reinforce the old ones. We don't really need to put on new warding, you know? Huh. Um. Never more in Bennick, you can I, I'm not even gonna make you roll for it. This is um what what they have done here. Like what she's doing is reinforcing wards. Um you only ward something if something is likely to come into it that you don't want to come into it. Um teleportation is not without its problems and occasional mishaps, but mm. the wards were perfectly serviceable the last time you used this place. Um they are going to be shipping in and out about 300 400 students um which is heavy load they're, they're like this mm. place this thing gets used about once a week um normally so yeah the the idea of sending like an order uh, several orders of magnitude more more traffic through it than it normally would be yeah it's not necessarily a bad idea but add into that the glyphs that you can see the runes that you can see um and she is fully aware of them as well uh just doesn't know what they mean um they're well like as you said well above her pay grade but um it's definitely you haven't been told how they're planning on getting you to the plane of fire but mm. you have to assume that this is I, to do this. yeah i suspect i suspect and i was going to voice it to benick on the way out um not around chill that uh mm. it was being done to make sure that I guess when we come back from the, f the plane of fire, we don't bring anything with us or create any more rifts. Yeah, that'd be nice. Just like out of earshot from gel after we extra. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> yeah. sure. Cool. But I'm, Thanks, I'm glad that, that you keep voice. like working, Jill. <laughs> oh, That's thank all. You. No, it's okay. I'm, I'm going to get back to it. It's fine. Nice to see you, dude. <laughs> You are gonna, <laughs> you are gonna get extra credit, right? You should. Oh, maybe. Like it's just my work. It's just what I got to do. It's not really, you know. I don't get paid. You're this way too it? good at this. <laughs> this probably has been show. Too put in as a uh, an extra credit assignment. <laughs> Um, but yeah, oh, Jell has so much extra credit, she should probably have graduated by now. <laughs> um, you know me, I can't leave. 
I know that feeling. <laughs> um, cool. Alrighty. Uh, yeah. You. Where? What do you do? Where do you go? To the dean. Sure. Um, so you leave the teleportarium uh, and head downstairs to the dean's office. Uh, it's about a third of the way down the enormous stony tree that is the. Uh, uh, that, that is the avium um, and you find the Dean Winsworth in his office um, uh, busy over in fact it's like a crazy wall but it's a whole office um, it, there is and I want to be clear there's no string but uh, it looks like uh... there's yeah sort of yeah like the woolen red string and all that but but not no string um however in all other respects it's very like a crazy wall um this guy has been working he looks a little not manic but on the borderline of manic um as you see this this uh this older like a distinguished looking pigeon man uh turn his head sort of oh hello <laughs> Good, 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 you're back. Splendid, splendid. How'd it go? No oh, interrupting looks, anything, right? Yeah, this looks like a bit of a headache we've walked into here. Oh, oh wow. no, no, I'm just just finalizing my uh, just finalizing some calculations. Um, how did you did you did you you teleport in? I thought I thought I felt a felt a thrum. Then yeah, you sure probably did. have seen some of my uh, some of my work and uh, Nevermore and Benick looking at some of the. Uh, so, uh, like on the walls, there is lots of tiny, tiny handwriting, but every now and again, there's a really big piece of, or it's normally more like three pieces of paper that have been sort of taped together or like, well, not taped, but sort of nailed to the wall with or pinned to the wall um, and that have had a, 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 a sigil or a glyph drawn on them um, and not necessarily in ink. Um, and a couple of them do seem to move and he's clearly been like experimenting and trying stuff out and uh, one of them appears to have been drawn on the paper and then moved off it uh, and now it's wow. on the wall it's partially on the paper partially on the wall and as you as you watch he pulls out a wand and taps it and it shuffles back onto the paper again <laughs> And he's a wretched thing. I need to draw that one a little. I think we perhaps never mind. So, how'd you go? Did you did you find any halvesite? Oh, we yeah. got all the fancy rocks you need. Oh, splendid, splendid. How much did you manage to find? I, I dump it in the middle. About a, a little over a kilo. And he goes, oh well, uh, ah, uh, well that'll that'll do. That'll certainly uh, not 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 much spare, but that'll certainly. Certainly get you started, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, well, I mean, further to that, uh, I know you probably don't need any more information right now, given gesturing around. Uh, Never have too much information, young man. What, what, what? what? Uh, what? Look, uh, some very trustworthy uh, individuals are now located up at the mine. Oh, uh, it's, people, been re it's people, been reoccupied. Yes. Correct. It has been reoccupied um, by uh, an individual named Kral uh, and some of his uh, companions. They're going to set up shop there. Uh, they're doing a very good job in uh, managing the <clears throat> mine. And they've also uh, spoken to us and asked us to pass on information to you that oh, yes. if there is need for halvesite in the future, Always. they would be happy to come to a negotiation with you um, and do business with you um, ah. if if any anything is required from there. And I'm sure that they will come to you as well with uh, requests no, from time to time. Oh, well, marvellous, marvellous. Well, I mean, Kral, you say his name was. Uh, Kral, description, yes. of, description of the man? Uh, he gets out a quill. Batch. Scars all over. Uh, scarred Mapatch. Yes, yeah, scarred Mapatch. Gruff voice. Uh, comes across as rude, but is actually quite respectful kind of like you know, oh. like, rather like you, know, you like, huh? like i keep saying like homely and by homely rabbit <laughs> yes i That's know what fair. you mean uh, yeah. and then he looks up sharply at trisha goes no offense <laughs> um <laughs> not rabbit's all a good patch. quality in a math patch actually but whatever you guys wouldn't understand <laughs> No, I, 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 I wouldn't. And I honestly, no offense meant at all, my dear. Mm. Um, <clears throat> uh, he says, right, splendid. Well, I'll make a note of that. And he, he flicks it at a wall and like he flicks the scroll of like the P 
piece of paper he has at a wall. And as he does so, a pin leaps off his desk and pins it to the wall. Um, and um, <clears throat> he says, right, so um, we think we've got it. We think we are I'm just sort of doing some final last minute sort of adjustments, but should be all good to go um, by tomorrow morning, we think. Possibly. To, so oh. what we're going to do is use the teleportarium. Um, and it's going to take a few of us to, to do it. And uh, I think probably just for the best, as for a little bit of a precaution, um, we are we are sending the students home uh, for, for a breaklet, um, but uh, which is also nice for them, you know, uh, um, celebratory. Hey, the wood's not going to burn down anymore. Yeah, they might need situation. to help around their houses and everything like that if their houses well, are damaged. Quite, exactly. it happen to be burned down or what have you. Um, so uh, there is that, but also there's a slight risk that this could go horribly wrong. Not a not a not a huge one, but a non-zero chance that uh, this could go completely base over apex. So uh, thought probably best not to have them here. Uh, the, most of the professors and I are sticking around, of course, to make sure everything goes as, as, as groovily as possible. So, um, basically, I suppose uh, you need to uh, nip on down and see uh, Professor Varus. Uh, he's waiting for you. Well, not I don't believe he's waiting for you. He didn't, we didn't know when you'd be coming back, but uh, he, is, he is prepared to assist you in the forging of something to... Uh, well, well, uh, utilising your... your, your how the site here um and uh yes we uh, I believe... won't take any more of your time dean thank you thank very, you very much. much um i believe young jordan is going to assist in the whole process because you oh, saw fit to you saw for it to let him in on the whole thing and we were not we're not trying to let anybody else know about it so jordan is going to assist um professor professor barris there uh we've, been, we've actually been i've been you know what i've been incredibly impressed with the young man he's really stepped up and grown into his skin it's it's rather marvelous to watch he always used to be a rather shy and retiring young chap but now we really i think he's I think he's coming along nicely actually it's rather good to see rather like young bennick did here actually um then I mean, like, when, when you got here you know what you were like <laughs> what was yeah. sorry what was bennick like when bennick got here no, no, let's let's not. <laughs> well, I mean, so, now so let, let's see. let's. I'm just curious. Um, uh, Benick, this is something I don't know. Um, and the dean would, in a very nice way, share, but he doesn't know. Like I don't know. So, how uh, was okay. Benick when he first got to the avium? Because I want to let you do this storytelling, not me. Uh, Benick, when the first time he came to the avium, was like like Kroll in terms of like pretty rabid looking. <laughs> Um, <laughs> essentially, blood. yeah, blood everywhere. He looked like some kind of homeless plague rat <laughs> and uh, like a vulture of like clean, like kind of clean. He's clean now. Mm. Um, and he was very like distrusting of most things, especially authority <laughs> in terms of uh, in the avium. Like he needed, like he wanted to be somewhere else than here, and he's just here because of what they can offer. Um, he's grown into a better person, but he was like very rough, a very rough guy. Oh, mm. so you're a peasant when you got here? Little, little rough around the edges. Um, I mean, we've, um, oh, we've, I, don't, I wouldn't say sanded him down, but buffed him up. <laughs> so I guess um, that's fair. Great job. And, uh, Yes, I think so. I'm rather uh, take some small credit for it. I think Benick did the heavy lifting on it, but you know. Um, anyway, well, splendid. Uh, you, 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 you head on down, see Minkus, uh, uh, Professor Varus, and um, yes, I'm sure he'll, he and Jordan are ready to assist. Thank you. Stay safe. Is there anything we can send up to you, or everything? Oh, else no, there? no, no, no. I'm, I'm all right. I'm having, having a meeting with, uh, with Ravania in a minute. Uh, the man is slowly recovering. Um, mm. <clears throat> uh, Benick, may I have a just a, a quick word? Oh, well, yeah, um, sure, of course, Dean. We'll be outside. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you can head on down. Um, he says, um, hang on, let me just find it. Um, I just I just wanted your feelings on uh, on this endeavor. Okay. Like, How, in what way? Well, um, 
well, you know, I've come to trust your instincts and your insight on this, and you're you're closer to the uh, the, the other defenders of Alder Hard than I am. Um, I was wondering, you know, you know, you've been around them, you know how they work. You, what what I'm doing is is really quite dangerous, actually. Like what what we're we're engaging in is potentially actually more dangerous for, for the avium than it is for you guys. Uh, you won't be here. Um, <laughs> Uh, the, what we're going to do is functionally have to open a portal to the plane of fire, as I'm sure you've gathered, uh, which is a not, not a particularly safe thing to do. And we are taking every precaution possible. And whilst I am fully within my rights to do so as the Dean of the Avium, um, there is just a small amount of concern in my head. You know, uh, is there a plan? Are you confident in the plan? That's sort of the question I have. Honestly, Dean, it seems like things are going faster than it should. Um, when we get there, the plan kind of is just based on the fact that we have a piece of the target, essentially. Yes. yes. There was... I believe uh, Nevermore successfully scried on him. Yeah. So we, we know he's there. Um, yeah. And, and uh, they, they have a vague idea of location. But we don't know. We don't know how far from where you're going to open the portal. Yes. They are. Well, we have actually, because because Ravania was part of that, we have actually managed to get rough general area. Um, but oh, I good. couldn't give you I couldn't give you a bearing. Uh, this is, you know, the, when you're when you're talking about into Palinar travel, nothing is to certain at all. As yeah, I'm sure of course. you know. Yeah. <clears throat> um, well, uh, good, splendid. I, well, I you suppose know. that's I suppose that's all I could hope for, really. Um, <clears throat> well, I've seen them do the impossible, so I think it'll be fine. <laughs> well, quite. Well, quite. Um, and I, I also wanted to say, and I, I said it in front of your friends, but I, we really are awfully proud of you, young man. Um, Vanna like freezes up, his feathers like spike up for no reason. He's like, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I mean, thank you, Dean. That that, that means a lot. So I, I, I never, never had the pleasure of meeting your parents, but I'm sure they would be incredibly proud of you as well. Um, I hope they are. Well, but it's fine. Should... He kind of like lightly punches the Dean. <laughs> like, I haven't met them either, so it's okay. Well, uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, best best hop along then and uh, sort your friends out. They'll probably need your assistance. Varys will definitely need your assistance uh, with this one. It's, it's a big job of what he's, <laughs> what he's going to attempt. <laughs> we have such a long list. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Dean, so we got mm. these ember gems. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, can I, I see? Jude has them. Well, I guess... I would I happily right say outside. that Jude... Yeah, yeah, you could probably oh, go ahead and grab one. Hey, Jude, can I have your ember gems? That'd be great. I want to show the Dean. Here we go. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, gently close the yeah. door. Oh, my. Oh, splendid. I mean, you don't have to exclude the others from this bit if you like, but yeah. Uh, you, yeah, no, he, no. He would... oh, you guys can come in if you want. Yes, no, I don't... Uh, may, may I? Yeah, may I? Yeah. Um, and Aside he says, from... So I thought, you know, explosives or, like, weapon treatment and potion stuff. Yes, yes. I was wondering if there was, like, something else that I missed that we could uh, use not, this for. Not, um... Uh, well, look, yeah, I mean, you could make a potion out of it. I'm sure I'm sure uh, an alchemist could find any number of uses for it. This is really rather marvellous. Um, he taps I know it we did claw. really well in... Extracting it, Jude. Where did you yeah. get it? What was this? Uh, to be honest, the, the the mine was infested with an elemental, and we slayed it in the hopes that we returned it to its plane. Yes, it was very sad, to be honest. Right, right. It 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 was still here. There was still an elemental here. Yeah. Mm. From in, in terms of like the age and like around. The marks it's left around the the man, it seems to predate the garbage of fire and death. Oh. Yeah. Well, 
that's interesting. Uh, well, um, so uh, besides besides what you besides what you yeah, obviously it, it would explode, or you could um, you could probably use it to uh, if you slowly and very carefully uh, inserted a weapon into it and sort of passed a weapon through it, a bladed weapon like a sword or a, a quiver of arrows. Say you could probably imbue uh, the 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 weapon with a temporary increase in potency. Um, that, uh, but, or, and again, Barris would be the man to talk to, really. Um, you could permanently bind it into uh, a weapon, um, or, a, or a, a, a focus, an arcane focus, a staff, for example. If you had a, a properly conductive material um, for the staff, uh, off the top of the head, uh, Hathrasil. Uh, would probably be quite a good one. Halvesite, obviously, if you had enough of it, but Halvesite is obviously ruinously expensive stuff to build a staff out of. You need several kilos of the stuff. Um, um, you like yes, a you... fire whip with Hathrasu? <laughs> wow, that would, that would be splendid, wouldn't it? Uh, yes, that would probably... Yes, certainly. Anything you could dream up, really. I imagine ha Varus loves a challenge. Uh, as you know, um, but yes, uh, uh, but uh, it would be it would binding it to uh, an arcane focus would imbue the magic cast with it with extra fiery effects, I suppose. Not hugely useful for where you're going, unfortunately. Most of the things you, you go there will probably find would be resistant or immune to the very thing they're made of. So probably not. But in the long term, when you get back, fairly handy things to have. Um, yes. Well, yeah, I was also um, wondering, since, you know, it can imbue things with fire, and because our biggest undertaking is probably going to the fire plane itself, um, is it possible now. to do the reverse, well, for now, but to do the reverse, as in, like, maybe, like, capture Something some... That... Oh, ooh. Into like, it. Like a, like a, like like a blood, soul blood. cage? Well, not necessarily. What if, like, some fire elemental decided to, like, throw lava at us and you could just, like... Bind it um, into armor? Like, to, to imbue resistances and so forth? Yeah, maybe. Or, like, you know, like, akin to the Absorb Element spell, but it's already, like, because it's... Like a permanent casting of it viewed into the, the, the armor or amulet that you're wearing. Yeah. I mean, uh, as I understand it, what Varys is planning on creating with the shards of the uh, Spectre of Fire and the Borealis, uh, anything like that won't work on the Plane of Fire. Um, oh. The fate place is just too full of fire for it to have any real meaningful effect. However, um, I believe what you're going to be creating this afternoon is actually uh, would have a similar effect permanently on oh. this plane. Um, I believe you're talking sort of permanent fire resistance as long as you're attuned to it. Uh, which, while on the plane of fire, will keep you alive. And while you're here, useful. It's, it's, it's great to probably um, speak to him about that. Yeah, hmm. that's, what, that's all. I was just curious. And unless somebody else has questions about our fire rocks. <laughs> yes, uh, just be dreadfully careful with them. They, they're very explosive. Yeah. You guys mind if I hold on to one for a bit? We should probably separate them though, so that they don't just you know bump into each other and explode. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So pretty. Dude, dude takes one. Trish takes one. Um, cool. All right. Uh, you head downstairs to talk to Professor Varus, presumably. Yep. Alrighty, you do that. Um, this is just. Uh, as on our way, Benick is just like riding the high of the like, we're proud of you, and it's very like, <laughs> sure, a little bit upbeat, but also like, just like little like, yo, god, <laughs> awkward on the way down. Cool. Alrighty. Um, well, the Forge classroom is sweltering as Professor Varus welcomes you in. Hello there. The dean just let me know you were on your way down. Let's hop to it then. Uh, <clears throat> Given the need for secrecy, I, I, I didn't have many people on hand to help out, but uh, young Jordan here is up for it. Um, we're going to make it a learning experience for him, aren't we, lad? Uh, Jordan looks nervous but smiles. Hey, oh. dude. 
You've got this, Jordan. I I hope so. <laughs> I've had to practice a lot. It's always great. Jordan's got this. This will be fine. It'll be fine. Um, so uh, I'll do the first one with Jordan here. And uh, though I will, we'll, we will need someone to hold the ingot for us. Uh, you have you have the medal, I assume. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, the purplish medal is handed over, uh, and Jordan dashes away with it and gets it into the flames. Yeah. Well. All right. So the process is fairly straightforward, actually. Um, one of you lot holds the ingot while Jordan and I here will strike it into shape, and then we bind the stones into it. Um, so who's up for helping? Me. Now, mechanically, um, the this is a strength check, a dex check, or an arcana check to okay. hold the molten ingot while the two of them work the ingot, basically. Um, and so, Jude, a strength dex or arcana, whichever is best for you. Um, and if Jude's going first, that's cool. Okay, um, first, I cast Mage Armor on myself, just so I have the hit points for it. And then I will ready to shield Jude with my new cool ability if shit goes wrong, because she's right there. Very well. Jude, a strength check, please. Um, anybody else who wants to do anything else before they begin? Um, ooh, yeah, okay. I have Noted. plus four to strength, and that came out. Yeah, yeah. you do. Um, <laughs> I said the right. piece. I was ready, I was ready. <laughs> yeah, you do that. Um, right. So, um, Varus is, this is, works in a similar way. Um, the crafting element uh, works in a similar way to the harvesting element, I have decided. Um, I haven't read the Heliana's Guide to Monster Hunting rules for this yet. Um, but uh, it's Varus is going to be making the first thing. Um, and he has got advantage because J um, Jordan is helping him. Um, if somebody helps Jude, Jude can also have advantage and keep the 10. Um, which I'll is help because that's what I'm there for. All right, so Benick, Benick had already said he's doing a bunch of healthy. So basically, Benick is buffing Jude up with some spells to, to make her a little bit healthier. Um, cool, you do that. So Jude rolls a 10 all up, um, which means I would like... Shro Grill, you're in chat. Shro, could you roll me exclamation mark roll space 20 in chat? Um, and um, who else is here? Moose2271. I haven't seen Moose in a while. Uh, Moose, can you also roll me an exclamation mark? Roll space 20 in chat. You guys are rolling for Jordan and Professor Varus um, to see how they do in this for the creation of the very first of these amulets. Jude's amulet, actually. Um, and if we don't see the roll soon, I will ask somebody else. Spina hasn't rolled today yet, actually. Spina can... Oh, yep, Jude. Not just a bad dice. Scorpidorp. Wow. Scorpidorp's looking pretty good. Um, 17. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, we've got a 17 from Scorpidorp. That added on to Professor Varus's plus 8 in Arcana um, is a 25, which on its own is actually the DC. Um, so... <laughs> so um, yeah, this is dude, uh, 10, 10 over the DC is good. Um, the process takes a little over an hour. Um, the uh, You notice there is some sort of, some beats and shouting in the background as well. Um, this uh, It appears that Professor Varus likes to work to music. Um, and um, yes, he's like, oh, this, this, do you like the band? This is Torn Apart by Badgers. Um, I, like, I like it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, banned from my hometown. Very good. Um, he's into metal. Um, I get it. A, he's a fortune. Yeah. Um, the process takes a little over an hour. Uh, the small hammers um, in Jordan and Varus's hands don't look anywhere near powerful enough to actually strike metal um, and make any meaningful damage to it. But it's more like um, the hammering is um, its channeling the will of the person rather than it's actually it's not the hammer that's doing the work. It's the force of the personality of the mind behind the hammer. Um, the forge master and his assistant beat out a, ir an irregular rhythm on the halvesite 
um, ingot. The whole thing is has a vaguely hypnotic quality to it, and you're all standing around and watching. After about 45 minutes or so of hammering, a delicate form begins to take shape, as though it's really just the will of the people watching it and and focused on it are the ones choosing the shape this takes. It's not the blows of the hammers don't appear to be sort of knocking it into shape. It's really just sort of slowly forming into it. This is magical forging. Um, <clears throat> um, after the pounding begins to take on something of a fever pitch as Varus grabs a waiting shard of the aspect of fire uh, <laughs> in a pair of tongs, uh, holds it over the amulet, and he and Jordan bring their hammers down as one together and there is a bright flash, and where once was a shard, it is now gone, though the metal is glowing even brighter and deeper red than before. A few minutes later, the process is repeated with a silver-white shard from the Borealis. This time, when struck, however, the flash is even more intense, and the resultant amulet that you are now holding in your tongs, Jude, is perfectly cool. Uh, Varus gestures at you, Jude, and says, There you are, you can take it off the anvil now, my dear. Um, Jude, that one is yours. It okay. is already attuned to you. Mm -hmm. And can you describe what it looks like, please? This is a, a an amulet that would be forged by Jude's will. Ooh. So Jude's personality would have dictated the form it took. You can have a think if you like. <laughs> I'm not gonna go cliche and say it's in the shape of a muffin. I <laughs> am going to say uh, that it's actually in the, in the shape of the sun. Um, kind of like the symbol from Tangled, the, the flag sure. of that nation. It's like no, a, no. It's a, a red, It's a circle with a bunch of triangles around it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that she, it was a toy she played with as a kid. The metal has almost, um, it's almost, it, like, um, elongated teardrops of red and white circling each other around it, each about halfway around. Um, a little like a yin yang, mm -hmm. but not. Um, and yeah, the metal itself is still has a purplish sheen. To it. it's a silver medal with a purpley sheen to it and um it as you take it out of the tongs a silver chain falls from it Ooh. and you infer that it's supposed to be put on yeah i um, um i gestured to jordan like this is the you remember the toy from and she's like and he goes he smiles and nods um all right who's next in fact who's like oh, who's who's next then I go next. Of course, Miss Caper. Um, all right, same deal again, Trish. Uh, Nelderberry, I know it's good, isn't it? Nelderberry and uh, Spina, can you roll me um, a d20 in chat, please? I didn't see Spina's from last time, so I'll pick a new one. Um, and Ju uh, Trish, uh, Dex, probably for you, or Arcano if you're better. Oh, dexterity, definitely. Nelderberry, number 17. Spina, an 11 would have been perfectly serviceable. Particularly on a 27 deck save. That's a save, not a check, but it's still the 25. Oh, it's still it's a 24. It's ridiculously good anyway. Yeah, Trish, yeah, yours is particularly well made. Um, nice. You're just, you're focused, you're holding on it. Um, Trish, um, yeah, you feel, um, and in fact, uh, pick two people to roll a D12 in chat, please. Ooh, okay. Um... You feel um, this, this deadly calm settle on you as you're holding this. Um, yeah. You can have Spina and Nelderberry again, if you like. Yeah, why not? Spina and Nelderberry, help me out. Can we get out. a pair of D12s in chat, please, Spina and Nelderberry? Uh, one from Nelderberry, not Oof. amazing. Oof. Um, but Spina, uh, also a one. Wow. wow. <laughs> Oh, so oh my god. That is an interesting that is an interesting result. 
Um, the universe said no. <laughs> no. Cool. Yeah, That's 144, not... 144. Don't worry. Don't stress it. Trish, today, don't stress it at all. Um, this is so. Yeah. Um, yeah. You you are holding it, and yeah. What does it look like? What does it come out looking at? The process is very similar. You guys absolutely ace this. One is particularly well made. Um, yes. What does it look like? It is a perfect sphere with intricate little leaves and vines sort of engraved around all of its surface. Cool. Boss, love it. Thank you. Um, those, those leaves and vines show up in different reds. It, one, some of them are red and some of them are silver white uh, across this silver metal. But yeah, otherwise, yeah, exactly what you described. Cool, and yeah, again, as you take it out of the tongs, a silver chain falls from it. Wow. Um, they don't have to be necklaces, but these two were sort of built to be necklaces. They can be rings or any other sort of form of jewelry. You could have an earring if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, that, that's what you have described. Um, cool. Yeah, right. Um, <clears throat> Varus then says, right. Well, lad, I think you might have the hang of it. Your turn, Jordan. Um, and Jordan's like, what? What? Um, and Varys says, he, I'll do one. This. I'll do one of the remaining ones, and Jordan, you can do the other. Uh, gentlemen, one of you can help Jordan, the other one can help me, and ladies, if you wouldn't mind assisting as well one another. Uh, Miss, <clears throat> Miss Littlefoot, I imagine your brother might like your assistance. Yeah. Um, so uh, this, uh, gentlemen, um, you're going to make the arcana checks now with advantage because Varys and Jordan are helping uh, pardon me, helping you. Um, and Trish and Jude, another strength or dex? Dex. Strength. 15 from Nevermore for his, with advantage of Arcana. Benek, 23. I should have set the DC high, hey. <laughs> 17 <laughs> and a nine. So who was helping Jude? Who was helping Jude and Jude? I would have gone, I would have gone with uh, the old bloke as opposed to... Very well. Uh, Benek, was, Benek you're, uh, you're, you're with I the I was going to say with the little foot, because I, cool. I relate the working, like, cool. practicing. Um, so a 32 for Benek and Jude, and a 32 from Trish and Nevermore. <laughs> um, nice. Um, that's cool. Uh, yeah, you, you both... Uh, so Benek and Nevermore. What do your two look like? Uh, mine is just going to be a cloak pin in the shape of a silver gilded feather. That's Ooh. it. And it's just going it. to sit right here across my chest. Um, the plumes no. of the, the plumage of the feather is red and white. Um, it's mostly white and then it has like a red tip. Nice. Just the tip. Yeah, just the tip. Cool. Um, in a silvery purple metallic substance and coming out from it. Got it. Yep. Yep. Benick. Mine. <laughs> Mine looks like, uh, for lack of a better word, it looks like a a totem, like a, a statuette of some kind. But the details Ooh. of the statue are like. A uh, hybridization of like different parts of not only like bird folk and humble folk, but also like just insectoid beasts, etc. Oh, yeah. So like this bit, this there's... weird chimera creature. Yeah, <laughs> and there's ah. like the it's like a key. What I perceive is like a keychain, but the what would be it's like hook thing is like a heavy duty like chain. Like a like a Link. a carabiner, like a, for for like rock climbing, so you can clip it onto yeah, things. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Love it, amazing. Um, did, like when you were at school, did you have your keys for your locker on your chain on your in your pocket? That sort of situation. Likely in power move. Yeah, I think I think you described Benick perfectly there. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Alrighty, I love it. Um. <clears throat> Um, well, after that, Varys is like um, sh looking over Jordan's work just to make sure it's good. And he's like, that was fine work there. Fine work. 
extra credit. Well done. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now. I pat him on the back, like, good job, um, brother son. Jordan, Jordan is sweating, but, like, he's, he's flushed, but excited, and he's looking happy. Um, I'm a little and, bit uh, worried, because I was like, oh, no, I infused my will on it. Don't, maybe, I hope he doesn't think it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a totem of his dinner choices. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Boy, Lily. Um, everything. Uh, he's an everything Aryan. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... Is there, uh, yeah, Varys has, uh, he's like wiping his, um, he's got these thick leather gloves on. Uh, Varys is a map match, Trish. I don't know if that matters to you at all, but yeah, Professor Minkus Varys is a, is a, a, a middle aged map match man, um, which is a fun phrase to say. Um, and, um, yeah, he wears a heavy leather smock with lots of pockets in it, and he wears like thick leather gloves. Um, and his, his arms are like he's missing patches of fur from where he's gotten burnt repeatedly he's scarred and he's quite burly um, like Mapatch tend to stocky but this guy is particularly like oof he, not, not buff but a brick wall of a man um, like not someone you could get past easily in a corridor without him having to turn to his side like he probably has to move sideways through narrow doors um, was, was and... Minkus always like that because with a name like Minkus <laughs> you think not I think he was like a very small map hatch child <laughs> he might have been yeah he might have been a scrawny kid but yeah he grew he grew into the he grew out of yeah. the name <laughs> he's um, like a big dude named tiny it's ironic yeah yeah, yeah. this so is cute. little John of the humblewood um, <laughs> <laughs> hello there um yeah uh he goes uh, is there anything else you fancy getting made you know I'm in I'm in the mood now and the youngster here is just getting into her swing um Sorry, what were mm. you going to say? But something, Benick? No, you go first. Uh, is there any chance you'd be able to put this on a chain of some sort? And I will pull out the Helvig's quill spine thing. Is it still oh, boiling we hot? Gonna, we were going to try and make something out of that, weren't we? Is it still um, boiling hot, or...? It's not boiling hot, but it is uncomfortably hot to touch. The hot potato, okay. hot potato, you could... It's not going to burn you, but... Yeah, you, um, so you couldn't really wear it as a necklace comfortably. Not really, but I thought you were going to try and make a compass out of it. Yes, that's right, actually. Thank you. Um, yes, if we can incorporate that somehow. We were going to yeah. make a necklace a while back before it was... Correct. Yeah. yeah. He says, this could take a bit of doing. Um... We'll have to use the remaining halvers, like. Um, all right, <laughs> I love a challenge. So, right. so this we is can sort of a. More. <laughs> yeah, I think you need to leave tomorrow, though. Um, <clears throat> all right, <laughs> love a challenge. Here we go. Um, so this is Josh now making bullshit up. Um, uh, yeah, uh, never more. Seeing it was your idea, you're going to be the one helping him. Um, so it, this is going to be a, an Arcana check from you and an mm -hmm. Arcana check from Varus. Um, uh, and advantage Jordan, or not? Jordan will be helping Varus. Um, if somebody else is helping you, um, um, then we have to time. describe in what manner. Benic, and... do you mind? I uh, don't mind what you need. Thank you. I just need you to watch kind of how the magic's being infused here. Um, and you're better suited to doing that than the other two. Not that you're not useful. You're incredibly useful. You're, and you're amazing people, both of you, and I love you both. Uh, but you're not magic users, so sorry. Uh, hey, man, I know my strengths. I'm I know. a magic user. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh huh. Judith. Uh, of course you are, Jude. I'm... Uh, Benick, let's. <laughs> I just look over at Jude like, look, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you're doing I know great. you you're are, great. Jude. Of course you are. Um, but I keep a lookout oh, with my... Oh, no! <laughs> no, Benic, wait, Benic, wait! What? Wait! Stop! Uh, okay, I'm stopping, I'm stopping! How can you look at that face and not want it to help you? Jude, help me, please. Okay! <laughs> I, that's, that's not my problem. Oh, oh my god, like Jude. I have minus two to Arcana, so... Well, I it mean, doesn't matter, you, you're just helping you can him. hold it. You I'll can help. hold it instead. Yeah, Thank yeah. Literally just helping Nevermore. Yeah. So you're giving him the help yeah, action, which gives him advantage. Like, what was that about? Um, <laughs> so, um, Shadow Silver. Oh, I have a dog in my lap. 
Um, Shadow Silver <laughs> and Omi, um, would you mind rolling me two d20s in chat, please? One each. And do I roll Arcana at advantage now? You would roll Arcana with advantage, never more. Exclamation nice. mark, roll space 20. Woo! Shadow Silver, bringing the big guns. I shouldn't worry yeah, about yeah, it, yeah. Omi. Shadow Phil Silver has this. Unless you can get a 20. An 18 is pretty freaking good, <laughs> Omi. We keep him around for a reason, but yeah, Shadow Silver pips you at the post. Um, we're adding Varus's 18 to that, um, which makes it a 27. And Nevermore gets a 24 with ben uh, with Jude's help. Jude, Jude, in what manner are you helping Nevermore? I am going to play my ocarina. That added to the uh, added to ripped apart by badgers. Um, heavy metal in the background is yeah. like I I can you roll me a performance check, Jude? I just want to know. Yeah. <laughs> so because I am now a, a bard, a bard, I have actually <laughs> added my my uh, to my performance. Are you now proficient in performance? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, I have to roll it in in D and D Beyond. So keep very it well. Let's do that. <laughs> Nine. Nine. <laughs> it's first first time. Oh, totally on brand. Fucking love it. Um, yeah, it's it it's, it's discordant. Like essence, but I think it's way worse. Yeah, it's it's discordant. <laughs> um, mostly because just the ocarina is not a metal instrument. Nope. Um, particularly, like a, a flute made of a, a grenade would be, absolutely. Uh, if you if you had a flute made of grenade, I would have given you advantage. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, Josh. Um, but you are you are talking to the right people. Um, if you want a flute made out of grenade, um, I want a grenade flute, Josh. I want a grenade. He doesn't want a grenade flute. I want a grenade flute now. Um, I have a mental image of the next thing I'm going to craft in my shed. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I haven't Wait. paid attention to you in nearly long enough. Um, I'm mostly a carpenter, so it's going to be a wooden grenade, but it's still going to be cool. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. Nevermore. What, what did we say? It was it was 30. It was 20, 27 and 24. C cumulatively a 51. And I had set the I, I'd set the DC at 40, thinking that's high enough, right? Yeah. Um, Nevermore, what you guys managed to create is um the it is <laughs> like you know the wrapper clocks like the big clock on the chain around flavor your flav. neck flavor flav yeah. flavor flav um <laughs> it's that but it's a compass oh um, my god oh really please can i wear it i want to be <laughs> um it's again it's made of halvesite it's a very thin disc of halvesite oh. um with benick's spine basically nailed to the middle Helvix. of it um helvig's did i say benick i meant helvig i apologize yeah but helvig's spine um nailed to the middle of it um currently the spine is just sort of you know that spinning that it does when it doesn't know where the person is uh it's currently doing that um yeah. but uh you're like uh, yeah it, it, he says he they you you were not aware of the exact incantation used to create that effect in avium amulets, but now you've seen it. Um, mm. You might, you're, you're not in any way a, a, a metallurgist at all, but you've now seen that. You've seen what, and he looks at you and he says, you've now seen one of the darker secrets, or one of the, not dark, he doesn't say that, one of the deeper secrets of the avium. Um, not many get appreciate to see you sharing that with us. Thank you. It's a slight modification on what we use here, obviously, but there you are. Anything else you guys fancy? Ah, I'm having fun today. Um, yeah, actually. I I picked up some Hathrasil out on the road and what? I've been thinking of, I know, it's so cool. I didn't know what to use it for, but since we're in a forge and you're an expert, I thought maybe we could think of something cool. And so I pull out the branch and the thorn, and I also pull out the crystal and say, and if my friends don't mind, this could be used as well. Been picking up all sorts of good things lately. Um, Jordan is like open mouthed at this and says, Professor, could we build a 
a fire staff out of that? And he says, <laughs> why, yes, lad, we certainly could. Uh, Spellcast and focus work for you. Oh, no, you're more of a sort of a run up to somebody and poke them with a stick thing, aren't you? More or less, yeah. Well, um, could you I attach could make... it to the end of a stick? Think of it uh, like a, the end of a mace, the head of a mace, and when they get hit by it, well, the, it the, 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 sh the, uh, the staff here could do that. Um, and Jordan says, or possibly an ember lance? A lance. Ooh. Um, this requires all three items, um, but he, uh, he, uh, yeah, the, the professor would expect, now that I think might be exactly what your friend here is, uh, is in the market for. Um, mechanically an imbalance, if you're interested, is, I'm actually, I'm not going to tell you what it is until you, if you, uh, t until you agree to it. Um, and we'll, we'll make it. Um, but yeah, so you can have a, 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 a fire staff, which is a spell casting focus, uh, which would be good for Bannock or Nevermore. Um, and it's functionally it's a plus one spell casting focus that uh, if you cast fire spells, does extra fire damage. Uh, it doesn't work on anything else and it wouldn't work with Nevermore's transmutation of spells. Um, but you it would do that. Uh, so a plus one to your spell casting ability modifier and a plus one to your spell save dc or the mysterious embalance which is more of a trish thing can it be any weapon or is it like a, a... it is a very specific kind of thing um it is a, it's a it's functionally it's like a quarter staff slash spear um a glaive would be the best way to describe it you yes. guys mind i a lot sounds like fun Please, by all means, last time. I don't, mind. I don't yes. have any fire spells. That right. actually from... sounds <clears throat> super cool. Trish, Thanks. Uh, my lady, please step this way. Okay. Love a fellow craftsperson. Uh, <laughs> cause, cause he respects your ability because you're a map batch and he's a map batch and he knows. So, Trish, mm. um, this would probably be uh, proficiency with scroungecraft. Nice, nice. This is a scroungecraft ability check, um, and he will assist you. So he is giving you advantage. Okay. Um, All right. So yeah, make me a. Uh, the, the, it is. He said this is not an easy thing to build. Jordan, pay attention here. And he says, "Yes, sir. I am paying attention." <laughs> okay. Good job, Jordan. Check this out. It's so cool. I know. Um, alrighty. Uh, so, uh, what's what is how does the scram crafter work? You don't normally roll for it, do you? No, not Let's normally. Let's make it a sleight of hand check then. Okay. Twenty-six. Trish. All right. Holy Trish, shit balls! It is. It seems to be going. Um, you. you he, similar processes before. You place the Hathrasil branch in the flames, and um, he he gets you to hold it with one hand while you... He's like, you're going to be the wielder on this one, so you're going to have to be the wielder. And he hands you a hammer. Okay. He says, I know this isn't normally your thing, but I believe in you, girl. Um, and he, Jordan, and you take it in turn, sort of rhythmically beating on this piece of um, metal branch um, and slowly it starts to straighten into this perfect shaft. Um, he then adds the thorn to the tip and the thorn elongates into this leaf shaped blade um, and <laughs> attaches itself to the <laughs> dragon plate. Um, Never mind. Um, I, yeah, and um, yeah, then they, I don't know what you guys are being dirty or filthy. I don't know. I'm not paying attention. I'm talking to Trish. You should. We're making cool stuff. We are making cool stuff. Yeah, We're beating on a cool shaft stuff. together. Um, don't worry yeah, about your echo shaming. <laughs> Never mind. So um, it, it is elongating. It's getting longer and stronger. It's getting thicker as well. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, and then um, he says, "Right, I've got the I've got the uh, the spear. 
now with the tongs take the ember gem and um where would you like to put it he says your choice either in the blade or the haft so either way you would hold it mm. or in the blade itself i think in the haft good choice good choice um at this point however it seems to be getting harder to bind it um you hold it over it and there's just a couple of shifts uh, a couple of missed strikes um it's hard to say who did it mm -hmm. um could have been any one of you um but you see it just starting to to warp and you feel this well of anger and resentment inside of you of these these shuffling academics and their spells and their books that just never freaking work and this red haze descends around you mastering yourself you look down you're holding the smithing hammer and the item that they were in the process of messing up and it sits before you complete the two of them are standing about six feet back, eyes wide. <laughs> like, you really do have a gift for this. I shouldn't have even helped. <laughs> um, Trish, you are holding an ember lance. The ember lance is part of your level up. Uh, congratulations on making all the correct choices. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, Yay! Trish is. Trish, do you want to tell him? Trish has decided to embrace the anger she feels so frequently and take a level of barbarian. <laughs> Trish, <clears throat> you are uh, holding the uh, uh, basically. Um, uh, it Darth is your rage. It is. It is your rage weapon, Darth Caper. Yes, amazing. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> um, yeah. <sighs> yeah, you are holding uh, an ember lance. It is, um, it is a silver spear from tip to tip. Um, until activated, it, it is just a normal spear. Um, but it is a 1d8 slash 1d10 variable damage weapon, depending on whether you use it with one hand or two. It is, however, not a light weapon, so you cannot deal wield with another blade. It is, okay. it is this or nothing. Um, okay. You can have a shield and this in one hand, or you can 1d10 damage. Um, however, when you activate your rage with this weapon, you grasp the haft, you press the gem embedded in the haft, and the blade glows. And you experiment with it now. The blade bursts into flames. This is a plus one spear, uh, it, or a, it's actually a plus one, um, it, a plus one lance. Uh, it, it, no, it's not. It's not any of those things. It's something I made up. So it is. I'm afraid it is a plus one, one d eight slash one d ten weapon. Um, that your rage damage, rather than being two, and linked to a strength weapon, this is a dex weapon for you and your rage damage is doubled. Broken. And, <laughs> and does fire damage, not not uh, the standard weapon damage. Wow. You cannot, however, use any other weapon as a barbarian. This is it. <laughs> fair, um, fair. <laughs> oh, I, I take um, a step back from the tables and just give it a good twirl. And everyone stands way back. <laughs> I don't know an abjurer. I'm just like, Whoa. yeah. Again, this is not going to be super handy for you where you're going, um, <laughs> but it's fine. Yeah, it's like when when you say broken, I was like, yeah, but bear in mind, most of what you fight is resistant to fire damage. So, <laughs> um, oh. yeah. Well, um, Trish, you can now select two people in chat to roll your d12s if you like. The the ones I already had were for something else that didn't happen because a pair of a pair of ones no that doesn't happen. Fair um. enough. <laughs> um, chaotic platypus, if you could help me out. Solid name. 
uh, Chaotic <laughs> That's Platypus. That's a great name. I think I've pointed this out before. I love Chaotic Platypus. Uh, yeah, can we get an exclamation mark roll space 12 in chat? If it's another one. <laughs> I'll be I'll be very upset if it's another one. Um, <laughs> and Omi. Omi, help me also. Oh, oh, Omi. All right, let's see it. Oh! <laughs> yes, Platypus! Yes! yes. Ah. Hell yes! Oh my god! Don't stress it, Omi. I don't think you can beat that. I um, would I... laugh if Omi also rolled a 12, though. 10. Close. Close. Omi, Close. Is, Close. Omi is a yeah. Omi one Kenobi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nelderberry, you're striking good tonight. Um, yeah, uh, Trish, yeah, you get a full 12. Fuck me. A full 12 <laughs> plus your con mod, which is three. So 15 more hit points to you already. Way too much for a rogue. Oh, God. Oh, I, the I, level. He was saying, <laughs> dear Lord. Okay. Max level bar. Max Unkillable. Damage. Oh my God. Now she's, now she's when raging resistant to most damage. Um, Great. Also, Oof. she takes, like, um, uh, you are now aware that you, uh, if you take your armor off, you actually become better AC. Um, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is dex plus con plus oh 10, Lord. which makes it 17, I think. Um, Put it back on, Trish. Nobody wants to see that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, Better live her life. Varys is like, ah, oh, I am having a good day today. Uh, <laughs> what do you think, young man? Anything else we can make? And Jordan looks at you, Jude, and says, "Do you have anything you want?" <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if I can do it. Well, we can certainly try. I want to make a flute out of this. Uh, oh, wow, what's happening? A flute out of a grenade. Yeah. I love this idea. Well then. I don't know we how can... magic works, but I think I can make musical fire, you know? This would be very similar to what we proposed with uh, the, the fire stuff. And plus one spellcasting focus. Nice. Um, yeah, all right, Jude, he yeah. says, uh, Varys goes, all right then, let's give it a go. Jude, same deal, but you're going to be the one doing it. So, uh, this will be a sleight of hand. She rolls um, a one, does it explode? <laughs> Um, Don't look like that, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Jordan will be helping. Will he? Um, Shanahas, can we get uh, an exclamation mark roll space 20 in chat, please? A didgeridot? <laughs> <laughs> Shanahas, roll a four. Yeah. Look. Fate is not on my side with rolls today, Josh. No, okay. I know, right? You might be okay. I'm gonna roll a sleight okay. of hand. Wish me luck, everyone. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> um, so Varus is there, sort of hovering around the pair of you, offering advice. Um, this is something like so. Jude, how would you go about this? Given the description of the way these things, this this works, you and Jordan working together, how would you approach this? There is a tiny amount of ha uh, halvesite left over. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Jordan, Jordan is sort of proposing, would propose to, he gets out a set of drills. Mm -hmm. And um, he's, he, uh, would say, I think we use these for, yeah? I think what I want to do is I want to carve out the flute from the, or like within the gem. Mm -hmm. um, so it still has that fiery flicker in the middle. And then when we drill the holes of the flute to lace those openings with the halvesite. Love it. Um, so it's like an orange fiery flute with bits of silvery metal where the holes okay. are. Uh, in which case, yeah, um, Jordan 
very gingerly takes the tongs and puts the fire gem, mm -hmm. the ember gem, in the flames. And gestures for you to do the same uh, with another pair of tongs. And after a little minute, you pull it and the gem elongates. Um, basically, like, just stretches straight out. Um, and then he carves small circles of halvasite mm -hmm. and bashes them onto it. <laughs> the first, at first, quite gingerly, but Varys said, "No, harder. You can't be ginger with this." And he goes, "Okay." Boom! And there is an explosion. Not a bad one, but it definitely a. Poof. Okay, wow. Um, and Jude, can you make me a constitution save, please? And Nelderberry, can I get a constitution save as well, please? Uh, there's an exclamation mark roll space 20 for Jordan. Uh, 21, fine. I have a 10. Did I have help? <laughs> and a 10, and a 10. Um, a 10, yeah, that's not, um, yeah, Jordan's would have a, actually Jordan has a, a, a flat, oh no, he's got a plus one to con. I built Jordan a little while ago. Um, I, I actually made Jordan in D&D Beyond because I was like, I, I, I want to know what he would be. Um, two levels of wizard, one of uh, artificer, as it is. Um, and uh, so he's, he's, and I know his con is plus one because I rolled for it using our stat roller on D and D, uh, roll, roll twenty. Um, his stats are actually really good. Uh, <laughs> he's just very weak. Um, but yeah, uh, I super want to play him at some point. Um, and uh, yeah, he he. Every time he bashes this down, you both just sort of feel this pulse of power, and you've really struggled to stay next to the forge. And it's only Varys's hands on your shoulders keeping you next to it. He's just standing over you like, yes, good, good, my children. Um, and as, as you, no, that's, he's not saying that. Um, and yeah. He's not he, evil. Jordan <laughs> is slowly placing each hole as it goes um, and then drives the drill bits into them again. He sort of mounts the drill bits on the tip of the hammer and then drives them in through these circles that he's found into the gem. Um, and then he pulls it out and it's glowing hot and he says I think that might work cool <laughs> um, I don't even know what to call this <laughs> a flame flute Varus goes and so it is flame flute that one's going in the journal boy <laughs> um, cool and the journal is actually this enormous tome at the far end of the room uh, on a podium. Uh, and Jordan says, really? I've never gotten to add anything to the journal before. The journal is a record of every magic item, every new magic item ever made at that particular forge. Jordan, Jordan. Um, Jordan, Jordan. And Jordan goes, wow, oh, thank you, Professor. Um, he said, well done, lad. Anything further? Or are we good here for the day? <laughs> I'm getting a little tired myself <laughs> at this point. Yeah, we should probably sleep. It, yeah. as, you go, as you go outside, it is uh, probably, um, oh, nine at night mm. uh you went in at midday it doesn't feel like it's like going uh. in the casino you come out like three hours later it's actually like 12 hours later um mm -hmm. yeah um and you, you come out and you're like oh wow and the cool night air welcomes you and it's probably a relief uh you've been in that room that sweltering hot like there have been dozens of forges going constantly for like eight hours um it's been a while um and uh, yeah, the professor says, well, Jordan here is going to uh, jot something down in a book quickly. And then uh, I suggest you guys get to dinner. I'll send him up to have dinner with you. And 
Then he'll be going home, I believe. And Jordan says, yeah, I'm going back to see the family. What? Well, we're going, we have a holiday. Um, and Varys says, I was actually going to mention to you, young man, uh, my, uh, my wee son, he's uh, just, just mm -hmm. turned five, and uh, I haven't been around nearly enough to present him with a younger sibling. Um, he'd probably enjoy having somebody to hang out with for a couple of weeks. Um, I know you and your folks don't necessarily get along. If you wanted to have somewhere else to go, I'll... Uh, he pulls a letter out of his top pocket and gives it to him and is like, give this to me, my good lady. Uh, tell her I'll be home shortly. Um, if you fancy it. And Drew, do you think Jordan would go for that? Yeah. 100%. If he went back to the brothers. I, yeah, I don't think he would, he would, he, he wouldn't have fun. <laughs> um, they'd probably build him a forge and make him work. <laughs> um, uh, or, or make fun of him for being, being a, a magic user. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Um, well, I think ladies and gents, um, we'll leave it there. Um, there's just one thing I would like to do with... No, I'll wait till next time. I'll wait till next time. Um, cool. Um, we will leave it there, that? guys. Cover my holes and blow me. The story of an ocarina. Ah. Wow. Serum, you're a terrible, terrible person. Uh, Brilliant. <laughs> very funny. We love him to bits. <laughs> awful, awful. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, we will leave it there, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and beings of indeterminate gender and persuasion. Um, so let's put on some less heavy duty music. In fact, let's have, I want to have that. Uh, I, let's let's go back to- um, Bye bye. Uh, Fire flute. Fire flute. Um, Bork. Yeah, the, the, uh, yeah, ripped apart by badgers. Um, looking, apart, <laughs> looking for him. Um, so good. <laughs> it's, if anybody who, anybody who uses Sirenscape, which is what I'm using for our music, um, it is uh, Avernus rock music. Um, where is it? I have a lot of music on here. Um, where have you gone? See, the problem is I move stuff around and it changes. Hang on. Let's just having, having the metal going in the forge just felt so right. I know, right? <laughs> I loved it. I was, I was building that soundscape. I was like, this is right. This is, this, is, <laughs> this is right. There it is. There it is. All right, stop and play that again. Okay, cool. Right. So uh, I think we have a bunch of people we need to thank. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank everybody for watching and playing. I'd like to thank the Deck of Many for what I'm sure you can agree is really cool work building this world that I have embellished. Um, thanks, Serum, for his amazing and disgusting work behind the scenes. Um, some of it amazing, some of it the, his comments in chat. Um, <laughs> we need to thank Breepi, our amazing artist. Uh, again, their work is actually not on the screen right now because on the screen right now is the work of Wooten Forge, our amazing sponsors, uh, purveyors of WA's finest handcrafted wooden top, wooden tabletop accessories. Uh, support from them that uh, allows us to bring you this kind of amazing content. Uh, we have a discount code for you, so head on over to wootenforge.com and use code HUMBLE2. Uh, and this week you can get free engraving on all of your orders. What a great deal. Thank you, Halloween. Um, humble too, peeps. Yes. Um, <laughs> flutes and fire. Exactly. Uh, fly, fire flutes. Um, so, as always, we are going to do some favorite moments. Um, we're going to try and make this a little bit quicker than we normally make it. So, who wants to go first? Speed round. Speed round. Um, Jude, tell me your yeah, favorite yeah. year moment. Oh, consummating. Consummating. The it's use of that word. Yeah. Excellent. Well Thank done. You. Thank you. Yeah. Solid work. Um, yeah. I... Shaking the gemstones around. <laughs> <laughs> I was Don't freaking out. I was just like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah. Rach, what do you reckon? Oh, the deliberate misunderstanding. Setting us all up for that fucking nonsense was excellent. Solid. Solid work. Yes. Dan, what do you think? Um, I just like that scene with the, the actual 
not consummating consummating yeah. scene <laughs> with um yeah Porter. there we go that's it i'm gonna go on that one as well but for a different reason i uh, with porsche um i really enjoyed it uh, because i didn't tell you what i was going to do and i considered doing it um i considered telling you because um i would deliberately wrote it to be as like double entendre as possible mm -hmm. but she was i had in no intention of trying to lure you into a sexy time unless you were uh, clearly up for it um and um so i really enjoyed the innocence of jude i love that you that i love the way that aj is able to play dirty while jude is playing sweet and cute and innocent <laughs> um i love that you managed to embody both of those things simultaneously it's incredible talent well done thank, thank you aj it's a pleasure <laughs> to play with you um it took, it's a pleasure to be filthy but not with you uh, it's always fun um let's talk let's talk about dan dan did a great job um oh, wow. dan, what was your favorite self moment oh uh, this uh, can be so fast Describing uh, Benix first year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, I um, love the drop in of I've never met my parents in your like proud mm. moment with the with the dean. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I really like the description of your um, your your gem, your totem. I was like, that's cool. That's not where I thought that would go at all. Yeah. I love it. I love doing that. Yeah, amazing. Uh, speaking of gem, I, I liked that, that you, and this is more of a Dan thing, that you turned the gem around earlier to see if it looked like a frog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Uh, Benek is the king of one-liners, <laughs> and today's one-liner was, you know, sugar is a crystal, right? Oh, Just to confuse good. the hell out of her. That Beautiful. Was great. That was great. Oh, I have a bonus one. I have a quick bonus one. Um, when Nevermore playing for help, uh, Benick being like, "You're your own person. You can, <laughs> you can look after yourself." Right. <laughs> um, favorite Dan, his amulet. Yes, Omi agreed. Um, yeah, uh, I forgot to mention. Yeah, please, everybody, um, Nelderberry, it's for you. <laughs> um, yeah, for exclamation mark ticket in chat, and you too can go into the giveaway draw to win an amazing um, Jara dice box like what you can see on screen right now. Um, it's beautiful. I've got one very like it. Um, they will. They may even engrave it for you because they're cool guys. Um, and um, I love yeah, the I'm, fact that. Omi is also doing short, <laughs> short favorite moments. It's like yeah. amulet. Um, yeah, amulet. I have, I have no issue. Like you can throw them up in the Discord, guys. If you want to join our Discord, that'd be awesome. Yeah. If you did, it'd be really cool. Um, otherwise, you can throw them up in chat if you come up real quick ones. Um, alrighty, who ha who hasn't gone for Dan? Are we all good for Dan? Yep. I think we're okay. Good let's talk about Rachel. Ah. Rachel did an amazing job as well. I had fun with Rachel. Rachel, what was your favorite bit? Vibin' with Varys. That whole scene was fun as hell. I loved it. Vibin' with Varys. Vibin' with Varys. That should have been uh, the app title. I've got, say, I've got to say, like, Rachel, role-playing with you is fucking dope. Um, being able to bounce off you for these very funny scenes of Jude not understanding what she's doing, you did brilliant. Like, you, you took whatever offering I was giving you and you made it 10 times better. Thank you. And you always set me up so good. I love I love doing back and forth with you. It's fucking great. <laughs> uh, my favorite moment is a uh, drunk Twitch being like that girl that's just super proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, yeah. yes, girl, you, got laid. Yeah. <laughs> you did it. Go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It was yeah, fun. Absolutely. Yeah. I just, um, yeah, I really, I, I did appreciate the, the Varys scene as well. Um, and just uh, accepting when the DM has kind of done something unique and different for you. Um, mm. That's, yeah, you could see how excited you were with that. So it's just enjoyable to see yeah. people get that happy about D&D. <laughs> yeah. It's really um, fucking cool. That was yeah. definitely going to be mine as well. Um, I, 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 I I would say it was, I wasn't surprised by it, but I was gratified to see it. The grace with which you accepted, basically, I said to you, hey, uh, before this session, I said to uh, tr um, Rachel about an hour before the session, I sent her a message saying, hey, were you gonna go barbarian tonight? Cause I think it would be cool if you did. Um, and Rachel was like, oh, I wasn't planning to, but if you think so, yes, definitely. 
Um, and it, the grace with which you accepted all the curveballs I threw you, like you didn't level up at the same time as everybody else. And they, yeah, there was a bunch of stuff. Could have you could have gone like, nah, I didn't get one. Of and you didn't. You were just cool <laughs> and awesome about it. And I'm not shocked, but I really I do appreciate it. But basically, Rachel, you're a consummate professional. Um, yeah. Thank Absolutely. You. I'm really bad at keeping this short. Um, <laughs> Trackless Wizard, best scrounge crafter, dead set. Absolutely. Um, favorite Trish, motherfucking Darth Caper. Um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 very much it's like a, it's it's because it's a staff weapon. It's it's very a, it's a it's a uh, mall, a Darth Maul Darth style. Darth Maul moment. Yeah. Is uh, it double ended? Cool. Hey, it's not double ended, um, but we can mod that later if you like. <laughs> And Alan gave the other side. Now. Let's talk about Nevermore. Let's talk about Mitch. Uh, uh, we had a favorite Mitch in chat um, a, a little while ago. His recap and making true peace with Kral from Omi. Dead set. Yeah. You nailed it. That's, yeah. I, I liked I liked how things ended with Kral because uh, Nevermore had a lot of respect for him. Um, so that all worked out. And just in general, how he handled all of those people, the bandits and everything and being a man of his own word when he got back to um, uh, the avium yeah. as well. Um, so yeah. He handled that well, but he didn't handle his liquor well. That was my <laughs> first Nevermore moment. Drunk Nevermore mm. being a needy child needing to be mm. tucked in. That was so weird. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have to say my favorite Nevermore moment was him fobbing off Bannock um, he was like, hey, Bennick, hook me up because you're better at magic. And Jude's like, I'm, I am I know magic. And you're like, yeah, of course you do, dude. No, no, of course you do, dude. But the thing is, when you're in Nevermore's voice, you can mm. never sound, never sound sincere. Like, I know. <laughs> uh, and it was, and it was, it was meant to come across as insincere as possible. So good. But then when I got um, those big bottom, that big bottom look, lip in the eye, the S, I was like, <laughs> oh God, no, I've done it. I've hurt Jude. I can't do this. Like, no, you you. I can make a yeah. single teardrop. That was yeah. that was well, definitely my favorite. Yeah, was was his was like, no, nope, sorry, Benek, fuck off. I've got to have the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fine, loved right. it. I loved the the absolute disrespect for gel placenta. Like, <laughs> gel placenta. I'm Placen sorry, Josh, I will never remember <laughs> it's it. New, it's, it's placenta in my mind. Blood. It's the new feel <laughs> But like. You weren't wrong to ask that question, but because you're never more, the way you asked it was just so awful. You've got no tact. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I also, that's, that's right. The one line that I had in there where I just tried to gaze at your face while I was saying it was Trish disarmed him with her filthy bandit mouth. And <laughs> 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 that fucking oh, broke like, me. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Oh, cool. Alrighty. Uh, yeah. Dan, uh, do you know everybody? Oh my god, I'm so oh. I'm like dying, a brain dying. Um, uh, I must say how just how fast that was. Um, the like description of your. I guess we had time, but like the immediately like not a necklace, a clothing pin. This is mm -hmm. like bam, right there, and it's just yeah, this is stuff. And I was like, that was fast. I'm still thinking of mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, we've got one from Omi and it's deeply flattering, so I'll read it out for me. Um, Josh, I gotta say, it's the whole episode. To be working this story now basically is all improv. And the episode just shows how much you have leveled up this episode as well as the DM. I've said it before and I'll say it again, your style of DMing is great and you're one of my favorite DMs. Omi, I'm flattered and uh, I appreciate the heck out of it. Thank you very much. It is always a pleasure playing with these guys. It's incredibly easy to uh, to to riff off whatever these guys give me um yeah this was a fairly heavy duty amount of prep this is more than i usually spend prepping but um so seven pages of notes which is normally three or four um but yeah thank you i appreciate it um cool other people can tell me my, my favorite my favorite was i just because i of how much fun i had writing it was definitely um uh porsche and Jude. um it was that was fun for me to layer in like I was like oh I could use the word juice there um like <laughs> that was yeah that's what I was gonna say I love the how the how it was just like thick with like sensuality even though it's not really 
Yeah. Um, but because they mentioned it already, I'm gonna say that I like the music choice for the goddamn forge. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we walked in, heard it, I was like, Oh yeah! Oh, I like this. Heck yeah! Ripped this apart is by badges. ripped uh, ripped apart by badges. Is a uh, a reference to Bill Bailey actually. Uh, Bill oh. Bailey and I are both from Somerset. Um, as is uh, Minkus Varus. His accent is my attempt at a Somerset accent. I lost it when I moved away because uh, I wanted to get on in life. Um, but Bill <laughs> Bailey uh, made a joke about. Um, Ow. Yeah. Well, you never hear any like famous war correspondents or anything like, hello there, I'm in Ramada, and uh, Yasser Arafat, he won't come out of his compound. Come out, Yasser! He won't come out. <laughs> um, I've got Trifle, your favorite! He won't come out. Um, uh, is again a Bill Bailey quote. Um, and uh, yeah, he, he yeah, he's a very funny man. Uh, he, John, John Cleese, and I are all from within a 20 mile area in Somerset. Um, we're all three very funny people, well, two funny people and me. Um, and um, yeah, I, I borrowed that from him. Um, he was making a joke about heavy metal bands from Somerset, and um, so he's like, "We're from uh, we're from Shepton Mallet, and we are ripped apart by Badgers," um, <laughs> <laughs> because heavy metal will be funny in a Somerset accent. Um, cool. uh, I appreciated the rune wallpaper description, Thanks. where it was like half on the wall, half not, and then he kind of. I gestured for it to get back onto the paper and then complained about it. I thought that was freaking like, I thought that was really cool. Um, Thank you. And hopefully this doesn't take anybody else's, but you did mutter um, the line if you had a flute made of a grenade, I would have given you advantage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just love, I just love, I just love the <laughs> flute made of a grenade. <laughs> is such a such a brilliant. Well, it's funny. Jude now to, has I a flute made of grenade. Yeah, yeah. I had to oh, do absolutely. It because, of course. because you yeah. loved it so much, and chat got behind the grenade. Flute such a good idea. I can't not. You do now it. have you now have a plus yeah, one yeah, casting yeah. focus for for uh, um that does yeah. bonus damage if you do fire damage. Yeah. Cool. Um, it, it, it's uh yeah you'd get an extra d4 of fire damage if you ever do fire damage with it I, any spell you cast. In an emergency, can you just go like? Like a glow stick and go like this and then throw. <laughs> um, <laughs> my flute if oh, I... the didgeridoo don't. That's right. That's the didgeridoo don't is what it's called. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> or the fire flute. <laughs> my favorite moment. I will circle back Porsche, but one specific moment. There's two reasons. Um, because you made me like I had to consider how Jude would operate in that whole thing, and Jude is very innocent, so it made me like have to very be very focused on what jude was doing um but then when jude said consummated very stuttily but said it to portia she did not correct jude and that is the only reason that that joke continued because jude was like i've said it right because i wasn't <laughs> right. um portia didn't want to be rude and was like hmm. sort of <laughs> but she didn't even say like sort of she did she just didn't say it well, she that didn't want to be rude <laughs> it was amazing it was such a good character choice um yeah and fed me the rest of yeah. it yeah I, I, that, that was everything i wanted from that scene well as i was writing i was like i know exactly what edge is going to do with this i'm so happy yeah um grenade flute amazing uh legit half a d and its affiliates are half the campaigns i listen to on the weekly and half of where my mornings are spent yeah omi it's good fun having you it's always a pleasure having you in chat you are the high roller of the chat by some comfortable margin um cool have we finished being nice to me oh no Rachel. no we haven't we haven't i really loved the letting us personalize the amulets because you could have so easily been like yes hammers happen now you all have amulets but you let us personalize them and then you embellished our descriptions and it was so fucking cool i really enjoyed that um tip for tip for dms out there give your players as much room for demonstrating who the fuck their characters are as possible which is what i was doing um and it's something i have like it's something you a lot of you pro a lot of dms probably know at a basic level but it's something i've learned recently that give them as much room to, particularly when you've got as a gifted, a stable of players as I've got, give them as much room to show you who their characters are as possible. Yeah, absolutely. But that it was a deliberate choice and I'm thank you for picking up on it because I'm very proud of it, yeah. Cool. 
Alrighty, well, um, yeah, that was fun. Everybody had a great time. Uh, we've got some leveling up to do over the week. Um, uh, and you come tune in next week to find out what Nevermore has leveled up into. Uh, take it take take cross class oh, into it. It's exciting. Um, yeah, I have so many with fucking a, buds. Something with a D8 as its hit dice, which are only like half the classes. So, um, yeah, um, cool. Alrighty. Well, we will go away from here now because we've been streaming for a little over a, uh, an hour, uh, a little over three hours. Let's draw the uh, final exclamation mark tickets in chat for that beautiful giveaway from Wooten Forge. We will do our sign offs while you do those finals, and then I will draw the uh, prize. So stick around. Um, AJ, we'll go backwards. Who yeah. the heck are you? I am heckin' AJ Winters, the creative bean from Perth WA. I make world building videos every Sunday. Sometimes it's a Tuesday. And uh, <laughs> because life. Um, I'm building a world one step at a time that I'm going to host and DM a game in next year. I'm very excited for it. So you can follow all my socials, Winters Tales Co, or find us on YouTube um, for all of that jazz. Um, or you can also find me here on Raw for Damage Wednesday night at 8 p.m. for the next L uh, chapter in the Avatar six shot. Mm -hmm. The yeah. final one that will be on Roll for Damage, at which point it jumps over to Course as Cove in two Ooh. weeks' time. But stick around for Rhythm in the Minds. Yeah, Avatar Legends Six Shot uh, with Dan and AJ and Matt Brown from Split the Party and Axel Bebbington. Um, hype, hype. Cool. Dan, tell me about yourself. Hello, I'm Dan. I'm d Rep in Twitch chat. As you were told, I am on Wednesday for the Avatar mini campaign, half campaign, where I play a spear wielding non-bender who is apparently very ripped for his age, which is like a teen. Uh, Cause you know, with his rough and tumble. Anyway, that that's him. And aside from that, you can come back here next week for more, um, now with reforms, for more cleaned up um, Benick, now that sure. you know his past. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I can see that, and we'd love to see all your names again in chat and roll for us because it's always fun. Yeah, thank you guys. It's been a pleasure having so many of our friends in chat. Lovely seeing you there, Mitch. Tell us who the heck you are. Hi, Mitch Earnshaw. You can find me at Twitter, Mitch underscore Earnshaw, where I share things that amuse me and make me happy and smile. Uh, you could also find me on Twitch as well, which should also be Mitch underscore Earnshaw. But this is where you'll find me all the time. And I'm yeah, happy right. to be here and I'm gonna be happy to be back next week. Or awesome. pass it on. Excellent. Rach, who the fuck are you? Hello, my name is Rachel Fuka. I am a writer, actor, and creative trash at large. You can find me on various social media at Rachel Fuka, and you can find the book that I wrote, The Rings of Mars, right here on the internet. It's a sci-fi situation. They're trying to get to Mars, but that's very difficult, so it's things go badly. Anyway, buy it if you like science fiction. It would make me smile. You can find it on the internet. It's got a 4.8 from Goodreads. It's a pretty bloody good read. Uh, it lives on my desk because I've read it. And uh, now I can show it every week. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, and Madame et Monsieur, Dama under Heron and Beings of Indeterminate Gender and Persuasion, I am Josh the Pirate. I have been your humble DM and storyteller for this evening. If you enjoyed my face and voice tonight, you can find me in Paparotica at Fringe World and generally infesting the art scene here in Perth. I also have my own new channel, twitch.tv forward slash Corsairs Cove, uh, where we you can have find a second Humblewood campaign in the same world, but with a different crew, um, with the mother of bunnies um, as Kesh from this campaign, one of the NPCs from this campaign, along with Josh Towns, Nikolai Kravchenko from Academy of Xandar, and a brand new player, Brendan Ellis, who's not a brand new player at all. He was my original DM, so he knows his way around the traps. Um, alternatively, if you like the majestic voice, but you think I can stand to tone the face down a bit, um, I am also part of the There Be Dragons crew. I am a, we are a 5e d, d podcast in a fantasy gunpowder setting where I play the infamous and deadly pirate, Scan Felspa, and his little dragon, Krosh. Uh, we had a session on Sunday, and Scan met a demon, uh, or a devil. His name was Chase. Uh, he's a nice guy. Uh, made me a deal. I couldn't refuse. Um, that was fun. <laughs> cool. Um, I literally couldn't refuse. If I if I had, I had died. I would have died. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was fun for me. Um, right. Now we need to figure out who's getting some hard wood. 
Sorry, I shouldn't have shouted. I was just excited. So we are going to close the giveaway in five, four, three, two, one. Closing giveaway. Now we're going to draw a winner. He's getting that. Count von Zarovich. There you go. Count von Zarovich. Right at the very beginning. Yeah. Please, please, Count von Zarovich. Please throw, uh, send us a message on. uh, Ideally, our Discord is probably the best way to find us. Um, congratulations. Oh, they're still here. Yay. 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 I've got some nice words. Um, yeah, check us a message in the discord and we will make sure we can get your, um, your beautiful Wooten Forge dice keeper to you. Um, And engraved. And engraved. Look, I'm not (laughs) promising that one. That was an elderberry thing. He said it. I like that. I leave it up to them, but maybe, I don't know. You can send, Nelderberry said you can get Josh the Pirate written on it if you want. It's a bit of a weird thing to get written on it if you want, because that's well, what I've got know, on mine. Count, um, Count von Zarovic is a long thing to have to say on it. Um, anyway, um, a yeah, congratulations. Um, that was super cool. Um, yeah, I'm really happy for you. It's a beautiful thing. I'm going to be buying one for my sibling. Um, cool. Well, let Jensen ladies and other people as well. We are going to raid as we often do we throw the love over to somebody else um phoenix and wacky is currently streaming um, Ooh, as yes. is the eldritch scribe um, phoenix i reckon phoenix. phoenix because eldritch scribe is normally wrapping they up by always now, finish it's... now yeah so they're just yeah. gonna raid us so let's do away. phoenix <laughs> is still playing by the looks of it so we will raid phoenix and wacky Um, We love John, we love him dearly, and uh, it looks like they're playing some D&D. So we will start that raid now, um, and we will go over there, chuck up your favorite raid emotes in chat, tell them where you came from, show them the love as we always like to do, and we will see you guys next time. Um, Thanks so much for coming and hanging out with us. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody.